Welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. You have no history, you have no wrestlers, you have no matches. My belly's just a little big, my eye is just a little big, but brother, I am bad and they know I'm bad. There is no revolution. You are truly the future of Lucha Underground. I got it, I got it. How about a little heel turn? And no, if, if they piss somebody, if they took somebody off here, well then, you know, there goes their career. Well, don't piss anybody off. Hello everyone and welcome to the Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. The wrestling podcast will review Monday Night Raw and give all of you beautiful people the wrestling news of the week. Which includes lots of Hall of Fames and injury stuff. Yes, and Mm. including announcements for this very show. This is going to be a packed motherfucking show this week. Oh yes, right off the board. That is Turbo Tony swearing at you right at the beginning of this show. Just to give you, let you guys work. know what kind of show this is. But I'm not alone. And I am with a man who is feeling just as patriotic as I am that England won the Six Nations Rugby Tournament. It's Matt Marsander. That's fine. And we can not be like JBL and keep going on about it. Because sports references, Matt. Sports references. Sports reference. Yes. Local team sports reference. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, how have you been doing this week? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Yeah? It's been, um, I don't know why, I seem to have quite struggled this week. Yeah, uh, St. Paddy's Day uh, put my schedule out of whack. Uh, that's so, fine for you, that don't, that don't count for shit to me. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, like, uh, I, everyone knows here I do the Lucha reviews normally on a Thursday, but, like, that just wasn't going to happen, you know, but, uh... Well, I almost hit a point where I was like, I'm not going to be able to get, what, get Raw watched. I literally finished, I finished watching Raw... Half an hour ago? Oh, well, your fre- it's fresh in the mind for you then, so there's that. That's it. I got too busy, I was like, do I watch Raw or do I watch Lucha? Well, Lucha, Lucha indeed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone, just as a bit of an FYI, you need to catch Lucha Underground next week. As Tech Warfare, it's going to be amazing. There's literally nothing oh, yes. to say about that. Uh, but if you want to catch my thoughts on that, then obviously you can catch that on the Lucha Underground review that we do every single week on this channel. Another reason for them to subscribe, Matt, to this awesome channel of awesomeness. Like they re- like they need other reasons. That's right, that's right. Uh, we'll do our plugs and then we'll procrastinate with a few announcements and what's what we've been doing throughout the week. And then obviously we get into that wrestling talk that I know you guys are so interested in. Uh, of course, if you guys want to interact with us, I think Facebook is the best way to do that. It is facebook.com slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. We, of course, do have a Twitter account, and that Twitter account is... At Talk Wrestle Pod. It is indeed. And that's the place that you can send us any of your tweets and contact Matt directly and let him know all the things that you did um, on St. Patrick's Day, and he won't care. So, there you go. I can already tell you what the response is going to be. Right <laughs> Still doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. And of course, if you guys want to send us any private emails, any audio questions that you might want to be featured, you could be the first, technically. Uh, then it is uh, Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast at gmail.com. All those links are in the in the uh, description below. And of course, if you want to leave any questions to be featured on this show, then the comment section and all those uh, social media uh, go to places uh, is just as good as well. So, uh, with all that all that aside, we have an announcement to make on this show, and Matt. It's one of yours. Do, do you remember this announcement, first of all? I'm guessing it, your silence is a no. Could it be my upcoming holiday? No, no, no. Oh. Oh, actually, no. We should probably talk about that as well, actually. Then I don't know. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll talk about that, and then I'll, and then I'll make the big announcement for you. Because you probably don't know what I'm talking about, but still... Uh, yeah, Matt's... you could drop me and leave me in the lurch, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, well, you do know what we're talking about, you know. But we'll, we'll get there in a minute, Matt. We'll get there in a minute. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, you're coming over here so we can do our WrestleMania review side by side, our live review. We're going to be doing it right next to each other, no, no over Skype or anything like that. So you're That's coming it. over. Um, that means you'll have plenty of um, of um, 
like we've got so much recording to do over the course of that week and learning today that like NXT isn't NXT TakeOver Dallas isn't on a Wednesday it's on a Friday is completely ruined like the schedule I've had in place for about two months <laughs> for WrestleMania so. this is what the week this is what that will be crap <laughs> mm. Literally, my best laid plans just completely annihilated in in one fail swoop of me not knowing when when takeover was right. So um, interesting there, but we'll get it all sorted out, Matt. We always do. We always get. It we will find out. a way. And of course, uh, what what it may look like is we might end up having to do our takeover Dallas review after the WrestleMania review sometime uh, when Matt is over here. We'll get it done. We'll get it out of there. It's just, yeah. We've got a lot of content to put out that week. We're very aware of just swarming you guys with it. Talking of WrestleMania, Matt, going to that big announcement that uh, I was hinting at before you uh, didn't exactly catch my assist there. WrestleMania will be the very last pay-per-view review that I host here on this show. Ah, yes. Now, Matt, would you like to tell them who is the new host of the pay-per-view reviews? I don't know. Some guy. Namely me. Yeah! Yeah, you, they've been asking for it, Matt. They've been uh, they've been saying push, Matt. Or we've been hearing lots of good uh, feedback from your fast lane review. That's it. I've got. I've been pushed. Yeah, they, you've, you you saved me from my illness, and they gave you one opportunity to usurp me, and you look looks like you, you looks like you've done the job. So yeah, yeah. Matt will be um, rev- uh, hosting. I'm still going to be there for the pa- the pay per view reviews. But I'm not hosting the show. I won't be in the driver's seat, shall we say. Um, it's going to be Matt's domain going forward. So uh, you're looking forward to that. Indeed I am. Yeah. yeah. What, I, how are you going to make the show better under your stewardship, Matt? How are you, how are you going to... Oh, I can't get away now. No? No, is it... You've got too many plans up your sleeve that you, you That's don't... That's it. Okay. You want to Ace in the sleeve and all that. Okay. Talking of keeping things up the sleeve, Matt... I have a new segment here on this show that's going to air right now. Okay. Uh, well, I say air right now. It's on this episode, right? Yeah. It's going to take place just after the fan feedback. And Matt, this segment is all about you. Oh. Yeah, it is. I call this segment the new one, which I'm going to be coming up with every so often. Might might not be a weekly thing. I'm going to try and get it that far, but maybe I might have to take a week off every now and then to come up with new material but the new segment name is as follows it is Matt's super sexy amazingly difficult but intense awesome challenge now Matt I like I like this sound yeah I I thought that was a pretty badass name to be honest but you have no idea what this is I have not even told you what this is well Matt on an occasion I'm going to test your wrestling knowledge here on this show and uh, if you get five questions out of five, then who knows? Maybe down the line, once uh, the show starts kicking off and this becomes like a big deal, maybe you can start winning our fans some uh, some extra stuff right here. That may be good. But maybe until we get that set up, I'm still going to test your knowledge and stuff like this, okay? And I have one for you this week, Matt. And it's a, it's a, it's a good one. It is entrance theme lyrics. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. All right. So, I'm going to be testing you on five songs that WWE use uh, from past and present. I was about to say, is it current or, f- or former? But no, okay. Yeah. And uh, you need to get all five correct. So okay. That's coming in just after the um, the fan feedback. And we've got some interesting news. We also got the uh, the Raw review and uh, we've got our draft that we're doing that we that we put off last week. We've got that ready. We're doing it this That's week. That's true. Guys, this is a packed ass show. We've got so much to talk about. We can't really procrastinate any further. As much as we do like to do it, we have to get involved. Let's get into the news then, Matt. Jacqueline has been inducted into the Hall of Fame as of this week. And maybe some people aren't gonna like what I'm about to say here, but it I I was I prefixed this with you could call it an induction or the obligatory we haven't inducted a woman yet this year induction. Do you think that's a little bit too offensive? Or do you um, think I'm onto something there? I wouldn't say it's too offensive, but I will agree. Mm. But we, this, we've this we seen this coming all along. Yeah. Now, people might take my words and run away with them. 
I don't dislike Jacqueline. She's actually a fairly okay wrestler in that time. I just think Matt, it's a it's a shame that you ask most people what they would probably remember it remember her for, and it's more than likely for her tits flopping out on that episode of Raw or whatever it was on. Like literally, like everyone saw her tits. Yeah. So, yeah, but like um, I reckon that's probably going to be a mention in her Hall of Fame speech. Yeah. Yeah, more oh, I just realised we could watch the Hall of Fame together. Oh, oh. Three, was it? Th- was it four hours of Hall of Fame, Matt? Something ridiculous. Fun, fun. Maybe not. I think we'll have it on <laughs> in the background, more likely. Yeah. While we're doing other stuff, but uh, but still, um, Matt, is there really much more to say about this? I don't feel like there is. I mean, mm, no, I don't feel like there is any. Like, any, if you more. ask me about like top tier women, then Jacqueline doesn't really fit into that for me I don't dislike her or anything along those lines like I said we've already said that the WWE Hall of Fame you don't need to do that much to get in there really and out of anyone if she, if they're going to put people in that they have then Jacqueline certainly isn't the odd one well, if anything that. nowadays it's like well you worked for us for more than five years and you kept your nose clean I mean obviously with the exception of Sting but he's Sting yeah yeah, yeah. well you know like uh they have abducted people who never even wrestled with WWE before. Sometimes, you know, it's as long as they're somewhat well known. And like you say, Matt, the most important thing is that in the last five years they haven't been involved in anything sordid, mm. right? Then, then you're then you're pretty much like you've got a chance of being inducted. So, I feel good for her. We have is one of those women that Matt that since she retired in WWE, we really haven't seen anything of her at all, right? Yeah, she just left, and yeah, I guess that's kind of the one thing that WWE like. It's like. <laughs> We like it when they just leave. What, they just don't, like, uh, pop back up every now and then? Yeah, time. that's it. <laughs> sort of like, Sonny's being talked about again. Mm, oh, we're not bringing her up this week, Matt. No, no I, mean, I know. I'm not I'm not hinting that we should. Yeah. But... Uh, people, if you really desperately want my thoughts on what Sonny said this week, just visit our Facebook page. There's a picture there that pretty much sums up my thoughts pretty, pretty perfectly. Yeah. Um... But yeah, like I say, fair play to her, Matt, and it'll be interesting to see her speech. But is this on the level of, like I said, of like Trish Lita, Moolah? Nah, of course not. It's, no. it's, it's not even close. Uh, a little bit more tragic news this week. Really, really gutted for Neville this week, who. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he injured himself. Well, in, I'd say he, would, he probably did injure it himself. In a match with Chris Jericho this week on Raw. Uh, apparently he's got some sort of fracture in his in his leg and his shin or something like that. Uh, he's fractured his ankle. Yeah, fractured. Oh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. But regardless of that, Matt, he's out for three to four months, and WrestleMania is definitely off the table. I mean, we're talking two weeks away is WrestleMania now. Yeah. Um, like he's not coming back for that, which is, oh man, I felt so gutted for him. I really did. It really looked like he was going to be involved in that IC title match. Yeah. Uh, and but, I would have hoped that it would have been, it could have been the case. But. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these things happen from time to time, and you know some might point as Neville's style of wrestling being especially risky, Matt. But oh, just, you know, the worst part is like I I I completely agree with you yeah. about like the risk of his move set, but it's the fact that it was something as simple as sort of like a go and like he just he slid underneath Jericho's legs. It's not even like he did it like leaping off the top rope or anything like that yeah he didn't like mischarge like one of his epic flips or springboards or something and bust no that's it it was something that was actually sort of relatively standard it was quite innocuous in that sense that it's just like like i said it kind of happened out of nowhere but like this can happen in wrestling you know worse injuries have happened in lesser situations it's just bizarre uh, sid's sid's leg yeah well now yeah jesus christ don't don't bring that up oh that's I still just remember the bend of it, Matt. The bend of his yeah. leg. Oh, it's, oh, it's, it's wrong. Oh. Um, yeah, like I said, some people may argue anyway that his style of wrestling is especially risky. I argue that I believe that never when he's doing these flips, like he's that good that I believe he's in, he's in full control of what he's doing. Like, yes, as obscene as that sounds, I do believe that. We got a message, Matt. Uh, now people might be asking, what did you think of the Jericho and the, and the Charles Robinson thing that happened in the match? We'll put that in our raw review. That doesn't, you know, that, I think that's a better place to speak about that specifically. Yeah. 
Um, but we did get a question on our Facebook page, and the reason I'm bringing it up here is because I thought it was quite relevant to this particular news story, so I'm kind of preempting it here. Okay. And uh, Matt Mann put up on our Facebook um, Facebook page, um, he says that fans uh, complain that guys like Neville and Ambrose are watered down from the indies as it doesn't make them as popular. But are WWE wise in doing, you know, watering them down as it protects them for more injuries, or are more injuries going to happen regardless? Uh, my answer to that is injuries happen anyway. Like I said there before, like worse injuries have happened in less spots, right? Um, but as for guys being watered down, when it comes to Ambrose's former stuff, I'd rather him stick to what he's doing now and not do the deathmatch stuff. He now has Bobby. Yeah, but even then, I mean, even Barbie is better than it's having Barbie. like injections through your fucking. You oh know, yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, um, and Neville, and you might say, oh well, you know, because we've been hearing that Neville could do even more. It comes to a point where like he doesn't need to do more. He's impressing us with what he's doing at the moment. If he can yeah, do more, yeah, yeah. he needs to save it for later down the line. He, there's no reason for him to go over overboard um, in that case. Um, it's. Uh, it's WWE's use of them in storyline that's the issue. It's not so much them watering them down. Um, they're still impressive. Ambrose is still a good wrestler. It's his character now that's getting him over rather than the violence, right? Um, and with Neville, you know, he can still go the extra mile, but he just doesn't need to. Um, yeah. I will say, though, that what WWE does in terms of giving these guys less of a chance to stay healthy is that they make them wrestle just far too much. And then what I mean by that is... You can have a death match, which obviously is going to really damage you. But if you have one of those every four months or whatever, yeah, you can. You've got time to bounce back from that. These guys are, but are bumping almost every single day of the week, right? What is it? They do like sort of five, like five days a week, sort of thing. Yeah, close to that, right? And you know, when you look at it in that sense, they're traveling all the time, so they're not really resting properly. And there is no off season for WWE, so. What they what WWE do in that case is that yeah they're not telling them go out there and murder each other in the ring it's like it's like injury by a thousand slams right yeah one body slam isn't going to do as much damage as being gashed in the eyeball or whatever like that right but being slammed repetitive repetitively over and over with mm-hmm. no break your body's going to get worn out there's literally no other thing with that so. I like the idea, Matt, with what some people have said is that while WWE still won't have an off-season, taking these guys and giving them two, three months off, you know, I think would do wonders for them because it makes people want them back, right? And uh, you can write them off in storyline. Yeah, in it's sort of like, you know, the absence and the heart's growing fonder sort of thing. Yeah. And it's not as if they need to go away and not earn anything over that period of time. That's the glory of the network. They can go do tons of network stuff, right? They can appear in all these shows. They can host shows. But they won't be in the ring. They'll be letting their body heal up. They can go down to NXT, Matt, and help some of the guys down there. They yeah. can do plenty of stuff without putting their body on the line and giving them just a little couple of months each year. I'm sure you get like, much more longevity out of these guys going forward, but that, that that's my opinion on it there. And we'll talk about a little bit more about the Jericho and Charles Robinson thing and whether or not me or Matt believe which one is right in that little scuffle that they had. But uh, we'll talk about that at uh, the Raw Review. Now, Matt, I have to say that my top nine Hulk Hogan jokes last week were good, but not nearly as good as the responses back that we got from our fans. Oh my god, you guys are fucking hilarious. I literally cannot say it. Matt, did you see some of these responses? I haven't, no. Um, Like, one of them was, um, Hogan's renamed his dick and balls the Mega Powers, right? (laughs) Um... There was a couple of other just absolutely great ones. Guys, I was expecting, like, maybe even for a few of you to maybe even copy some of my jokes just to get your questions out there. No, you went full on out. You went the, you went the extra mile. And I was literally on the Sunday, like, sorry, on the Monday when I reviewed all the comments that we got from the night before, right? Because we released it on the Sunday. I was in hysterics. I literally spent half an hour laughing out loud in my house. It was, it was so good. But Hogan, Matt, what's it what they say? The one who laughs last, laughs, laughs loudest. That's yeah. right. And Hogan is certainly laugh, laughing now. He has won his lawsuit against Gorka for the fee of over $110 million. 
Wow. Okay. I just can't believe the amount of money yeah. it was. Yeah. Uh, now, obviously, this is for the leaking of his sex tape, right? The fact that Gorka was the one that put it out there. Uh, of course, Gorka can appeal this, but, Matt, their whole argument rests on the fact that Hogan knew that it was being pre-taped beforehand, so therefore he's okay with it being distributed to everyone in the world, which yeah. I just don't think is going to hold up, personally, right? So, if that is the case, then I I don't expect the appeal to win. I expect Hogan to get a decent amount of money, and I expect Gorka to be shut down. I think that's probably what's going to happen here. And in which case, Matt, if that is the case, if Hogan's sitting pretty on anywhere close to $110 million, right, I doubt very much that he even gives a single fuck about the racist scandal, even the penis jokes that were rampant. Oh, yeah. Last week. I doubt he even gives a shit. Because all <laughs> all right, he, he's already forgotten. Yeah, all he wants is money, right? And maybe his reputation down the line will come back and you'll want to eventually want to get back on good terms. But one of the part of the reasons why he needed to keep working with WWE is because he was not that great financially, right? He lost a lot of money in the divorce. But now he's sitting pretty. Matt, with 110, over $110 million. That's it. He's, uh, I, I saw one of the best jokes this week is saying that he's the new million dollar man. The million dollar brother, right? <laughs> with all this money. Um, and you know what, guys? A lot of you might really dislike Hogan for the things that he said. And I'm firmly with you guys. I'm like, yeah, it was despicable. He's not a very good human being. We knew that before the racist stuff came out, right? But in this ter- in the terms of this of this court case, Matt... Listen, people may not like it, and neither do I, but it's true that he had the right to sue Gorka, and legally he's correct to get these damages. So, whether or not you like him or not makes it irrelevant. He should be awarded that money. So, yeah. I'm just wondering whether, is it Terry's or is it Hulk's penis that can cause $110 million worth of damage? Oh, yeah, well, I don't know, Matt. Maybe we need another court case to... uh, to get this 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 shit finalized, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, um, I'm sure he's a very happy bunny. I'm sure Gorka will appeal. I'm pretty sure they won't win um, because even when I was looking at their appeal strategy, I was just like, it's probably just not going to work. You know, it's, uh, I just don't see it going down that way. Uh, whenever you release a sex tape of anyone that haven't officially signed off on it, you're running a very filthy line already as you go along, and yeah. I think they, I think they had it coming to him to be to be honest, but there we go. You don't have to like Hogan. You just uh, in this situation, but you have to admit that the releasing of a sex tape still wasn't right. You know, you don't have to like either party, but it's just the, just the way it is. But uh, there we are. I'm sure he's sitting pretty and he's uh, he's brothering all over the place. I'm sure he's pissed up right now, having a having a laugh and probably saying the n word tons of times because we know that's uh, what what he likes. So. Because he can, and he'll just throw money everywhere. Mm. So he will indeed. That's all for the news this week. Uh, there was a few other pieces of news, but uh, um, of course, if you guys do want us to cover anything uh, directly, you can leave it in the comment section. We'll tell you why we didn't cover it, or we'll cover it. There's only two ways that, um, That's it. You know, that, that, we'll, that we'll respond to that. Matt, are you ready for fan feedback then? Are you ready? For I am this? ready for the feedback. We got tons of questions this week, so a large majority of this show this week is probably going to be taken up by the fan feedback. And Zio Cage, just two questions. Uh, he had a, a Hulk Hogan penis jokes littered throughout uh, these, so I, I granted the, the position to have two here on the show. He says, first of which, uh, he's asking us if Vince isn't a fan of NXT. Could it be because of his apparent preference for big guys as stars? And he knows that we could poke a lot of holes in that, but he thought he would ask it anyway. Um, I think his dislike for NXT goes a bit beyond that, but anyone thinking that Vince has moved on from really liking hulking behemoths are being a bit naive. I honestly think that he's always going to have a soft spot for his heart for the six foot four close over 250 yeah. close to 300 pound good looking guy with at least some charisma i don't think the in-ring aspect really factors into that that much so um he's always gonna matt he's always gonna have a love for that sort of guy right um, yeah 
if you if you're a world class wrestler, man, that just that's extra. That's not what he requires of someone. So I firmly believe. That. I think I think it all boils down to like it's it's been well documented that Vince very much has that mentality of oh, so you spent fifteen years like main eventing everywhere around the world, but here. I don't care about that. Yeah. Vince is very... Um, he's very picky in that sense. Like, he, he has his own criteria that he picks a guy on. And it doesn't necessarily have to be on how successful they would actually be for him, which is quite strange, right? Look at John Cena. John Cena, in my opinion, is the perfect guy in Vince's eyes. He is the best person that he's ever hired in Vince. I'm sure he thinks that of John Cena. And the reason why I think that yeah. is that unlike all the other big stars he's had, he's never walked away. He's never betrayed them and gone to another company, which is, you know, some of his other yep. big stars have. Hogan went to another another company, right? Almost put him out of business. Um, and also the whole steroid stuff, which put a wedge between them. Ho- um, sorry, Austin walked out on WWE for like a year. Right, Rock went away to do movies. Right, yeah. John Cena is the only guy that stayed there, and he's worked non-stop in in that time without asking really any questions. He's just worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. That's um, it. Just uh, just all he's done is just like, what do you need me to do? Yeah, yeah. Now John Cena may not nearly be as successful uh, in terms of drawing crowds as those guys. I mean, he's not he's not as successful as. Um, Austin or Hogan at the very least they were drawing much bigger crowds uh, uh, during the Attitude Era and the Golden Era of wrestling whatever Yeah. but I honestly think that Vince looks at Cena and is like if I can have someone if I could clone this guy take him back 20 years and start all over again I would fucking love to do it because I think honestly he loves John Cena Um, he's always had a predisposition towards muscled up 300 pounders he tried to push Ahmed Johnson Ahmed Johnson wasn't very, very good. And soon he realized that and had to accept it. He um, gives a lot more to people that look a certain way. That's well, look at Lashley. That's yeah. a good example as well. Like he wanted Lashley to become huge, right? But then Lashley went, ended up leaving him, leaving, right? And, and going to other, other places. Yeah. Um, let, me look at, let me put this another way. If you're a new wrestler getting into WWE, if you're over 6'4", and you're over 250 pounds, you're decent looking, and you're chiseled out of granite, right? You've got a certain amount of charisma, then you've got a lot of the, t- the boxes ticked for you. You being a world-class wrestler will not hold you back in that sense, because Vince will be like, well, I can teach you that, but I can't make you into a 6'4", 250-pound guy. I can't do that. Yeah. So if you come to me with that, and you've got some charisma, you've got the golden smile, Matt, then yes, you are going to be treated differently. But in terms of like uh, of him not being a fan of NXT, whatever, I just think he looks at NXT as the minor leagues. He's convinced himself of that. Um, and he, I, I think, think I think a lot of it comes down to just sort of like it's not my brand. Yeah, yeah. And he's always looking at it, Matt, as that as Raw is the baby, and yeah, yeah. Sure, everyone's like into this NXT thing, but it's just a phase or whatever, and along those lines. I'm sure he's always going to feel that way because he's not involved in it. I think that's the the main thing, main thing of it there. So apparently, there's been a little conflict between. Well, some reports have said there's been conflict between Triple H and Vince about that, but still, still. His other question is: How would we have booked the show with the thought track that? Uh, sorry, booked WrestleMania with the thought track that WWE um, didn't have any injuries. That all the injuries they had were off the, off the cards. Everyone was 100 percent healthy. Um, hmm. I've run down my list, Matt. What I probably would have done, and this is just off the top of my head, I would definitely would have gone with Sting versus Taker. Right, with maybe Sting being, um, yep, with no injuries, yeah, yeah, uh, no injuries. And like I said, that match would not be for the future. Oh, that's one thing you forgot on the news, good. actually. Go on. Apparently, that's it for Sting. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure WWE will put out a more strong statement about that. Yeah, soon, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that match would not have the same stipulation as it currently has. That's just a legends match between the two of them. And if you want to say one of them is going to retire afterwards, then that's fine. I probably would have gone with a triple threat match for the title with Reigns, Ambrose, and Rollins. The Shield having their triple threat title match. Probably with Ambrose winning it. Rollins going in as champion. 
Cesaro facing yes. Brock Lesnar if he had been built up properly in the interim. I think that would have been quite a fun match. Yeah, so it's less like if I had had the six month lead up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have had Daniel Bryan, Matt, defending his Intercontinental Championship against Randy Orton in a possible show stealer of the night. A pure wrestling match in there. That would be a proper match in the middle of the show that you that you give 15 minutes to and they really do good in that time. Just go at it, yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of others, uh, Cena, I would make him go against Triple H for control of the company. Cena working on behalf of Shane because, Matt, Shane would be using Vince's greatest creation against him. Right? Yeah. Um, I think I quite like that idea of having that along the lines. Uh, but then I would kind of argue and go. Like, can I carry on? Go on. No, go on. Go on. I was going to say I'd kind of argue because then you could have Cena versus Taker. But you like, still have to have Sting somewhere. On, 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 no, on. I know. Yeah. Um, uh, no, 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 yeah. Because that's still like it's still like two, Vince's two greatest creations going battle. Yeah, yeah. Not I that. Not that I would put, you know, um, <laughs> like Cena down as a greatest creation, as one of the greatest, but, you yeah, know. Yeah. Well, Vince will certainly see it that way anyway. But, yeah. Uh, people might be thinking that we're really bagging on Cena. Cena's still a star. He's still one of the top drawing guys in the company, but when you when you put him level up to some of the hugest stars in wrestling history, he doesn't really match up that well. That's all I'm saying. But he got all props to the guy, right? That's, that's uh, I like Cena as a person, <laughs> right? But still. Yeah. Um, the other guys, I think Tyson Kidd, you can put him anywhere, he'll be fine. Um, and Nikki Bella would just be part of this multi diva tag match. Her absence will not change the show that much, honestly. So that's the way I'll probably do it. If I'm missing any other injured people, I apologise. But um, I think I covered the list that he put in. So there's very least. Anything else that maybe you would have done differently with the injured stars there at all? Or? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, like I said, I'd probably have um, Cena versus Taker in a hot, in like similar sit- sit stipulation that we've got now, but yeah, as the representative. Okay, yeah, yeah. I still think that's still a good storyline. What they're going with Shane, so yeah, still do that. But the way I would do it is just have it Triple H defending his right to own the company and having Cena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way I'd do it. Cameron Hutton asks if we see a double turn at WrestleMania against Triple H and Roman Reigns. This is a great idea, but I don't think it's going to happen. I honestly believe that Vince is going to stick to his guns and we're going to have Roman Reigns holding the championship up in the air and it's going to be awkward as fuck. I honestly do believe that is is, is what's going to happen. I think last year he changed his ideas because he... You know, look at the last two WrestleManias. He wanted Randy Orton and Batista in the main event. The fans let him know that that just wasn't going to that wasn't going to fly, right? So they had to put Daniel Bryan in there to appease people, and it worked, right? Everyone went home happy. Last year, he wanted Reigns to have his big moment. They were kind of going against him, so they had to agree at the last moment to have Rollins cash in the championship, and then basically have Mania finish in that style. I think he's going to be like, well, I've acquiesced two years in a row. I'm not going to do it this time. I need Reigns to have his Met WrestleMania moment. But with that tra- track of thought there, Matt, he's not going to have his WrestleMania moment because people are going to be booing the shit out of him while he's doing it. So, um, I don't know. I I actually think, Matt, there's a good chance that they're going to have this title match happen earlier on in the night. I don't think this title match is going to end the show. No? I'm starting to get that feeling. Yep. I think that Shane and uh, Take is going to finish the show. I guess there's actually a bit more running on Shane and Taker. I mean, I know it's, you know, it's the title. Yeah. But it's the company. Depends on the finish. If they have, like, Shane winning, or for some reason, somehow he manages to win against control of Raw, yeah. then that's a good ending to the show. And I know they think that Reigns winning the title title would be a good ending to the show, but they must know by now that he's going to get booed to fuck, right? Yeah, People yeah, yeah. Are gonna, They're going to get really on his back for winning that title. So, yeah, the double turn would be interesting. And the reason I say that is because Roman has to go heel if this fan base is ever going to accept him. Going heel is an, is, is an inevitability if they want him to be eventually accepted. 
I just don't understand, Matt, why they didn't do it over the course of last year. Because they didn't think about it. Yeah, they could have. They could like. My Unfortunately, plan was after WrestleMania, he he goes heel, right, and he spends a good nine months being a heel, right, um, because that's what Rock did, right, and it's everything worked out for the Rock. People loved the Rock for being a heel so much that he just became face. You know, that's it. Austin, when he first came out, was a heel character. Up very up until he wrestled Bret Hart, and they did the double turn at WrestleMania 13, one of the best double turns in history. So, just keep. And to be fair, in... one of just the best WrestleMania matches. Yeah, yeah, in my opinion, the greatest one. But uh, still, uh, but if they don't do it, Matt, and they they insist on giving him the John Cena treatment, which is just he's face, face, face. We give him victory, 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 championship after championship. Why don't you like him? Yeah, they're gonna have the rest of his career of him being booed in certain cities and at Wrestlemania for the rest of his career and I think that's a real shame where they could just say look nine months we've got Ambrose as our top face you're going to be our top heel we're going to make you a fucking asshole right and you're going to go out there and you're going to beat people up and people won't like it and you know what? if people start cheering you for it then we'll just keep you that way because that's what we want anyway really isn't it so yeah I don't know. I think it's. I think it's. Really I don't strange. care as long as someone cheers you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think the double turn is a great idea. I just don't, honestly, I don't see it happening. Like the, the very idea of them trying to make Triple H face as well after everything. I don't know. I mean, he's being cheered now anyway, so maybe <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Billy McGee asks if uh, Finn Balor will become WWE champion at any point. Um. I think the short part of this Matt is I'm not entirely sure now if anyone from NXT is going to get that shot but I think if anyone would it probably would be Balor that's my opinion yeah so um, I don't know I'd be I'd probably go yes but not anytime soon you reckon so yeah yeah I reckon it's it will be when Trips has control oh really Oh, really? yeah. Okay. Uh, I honestly think you got the you got the caveat here as well, Matt, with the fact that he's been very vocal. Balor, more than anyone, has been extremely vocal about that. He that. wants to stay NXT. Yeah, no one else has been that public with his with his needs to stay in NXT and him being champion and raising the awareness of that brand. Um, but Matt, if he goes onto that main roster, he's going to sell a lot of good merchandise. Um, if he gets good responses and the stars start aligning puts money in Vince's pocket through that merchandise sale um, which I'm sure he will do then he's going to have a better chance than most people the only other person I think probably has a better chance is probably Apollo Crews because he is the sort of guy that Vince man, he, he would love would get behind Crews. yeah yeah. Um, Apollo Crews is definitely the sort of guy Vince is interested in but at the very least I can agree because I think that uh, that Crews has got a lot to offer and I said before that I honestly think this guy has got Massive potential if he can figure out some of the more deficiencies in his overall uh, charisma and um, psychology. I don't think his ring psychology is nearly as good as what some people think it is. I think yeah. that's his, a glaring problem in his overall package is his ring psychology. You should just sit down with Jake the Snake and just listen to tons of shit for about a week from Jake the Snake. And that should be able to school him up. But uh, still, still. Uh, what? Well, I know we covered that. He also brings up stories of an unnamed WWE superstar handing in their notice and then a possible announcement for a UK WWE Network special. This is about the news that we didn't cover last week. When it comes to the unnamed wrestler, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I'd seen the report, but there really isn't anything to speak about until we have a name. So that's the reason why we don't cover that sort of stuff because otherwise we can't elaborate we can't talk about the reasons why or why they might want to leave it's just yeah. us saying someone's thinking of leaving which in my case I think in WWE with the amount of employees they have there's always going to be someone who's thinking of leaving or thinking of not renewing their contract so I think we kind of clear, stay clear of stuff as vague as that um, and the UK Network special Matt I didn't catch any news of this personally did no you? originally no so don't know uh, if you've seen something we haven't please link us but if it's happening that's cool I very much doubt me myself and Matt will be going to it 
because it's just going to be them airing a live show like they have done with the other ones. I very much doubt it's going to be. Oh, I don't know. I might make. I might try and make an effort. Oh, you might. Well, I very much doubt I'll probably fly over. If I'm flying over, it's for either a live Raw or like an NXT special, which I which which we did, you know, or yeah, maybe a pay per view if they decide to do it in in England. Then more likely, you and me will probably be going to that. So, um, that's probably the way it'll it'll go. But still. Uh, Dale7402 gives his thoughts on Roblox uh, and Sting. Sting is one of his favourites. He says he's enjoying uh, our show and thinks we deserve more views. Thank you very much. Uh, just so, I know, right? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, we deserve all the views in the world, right? Uh, he says that... Um, he's saying here that uh, about Sting and he's uh, quite annoyed about Sting's treatment and his injury... I agree with you, mate, that his loss to Triple H was counterproductive. But um, maybe I'm taking your words a little bit out of context here. But when you're saying that you're really pissed off that Rollins injured him, I think his injury was much his own fault rather than anyone else's. Um, And the reason why I think that is because Sting was probably the guy who okayed going through a table and taking two buckle bombs. Um, If he is, then he should have known his limits. That's just the bottom line of it there. I'm sure he really wanted to make an impression, and I appreciate the effort on that front. I'm a huge Sting fan, Matt. You know I'm a huge Sting yeah. fan. Yeah. But you've got your limits, and if you don't abide by it, then what happened to Sting will happen. It's just the way it is. Uh, Rollins has a history of being quite the safe worker. And listen, if it was someone else's idea for him, for Sting to do what he did in this... In this uh, in this match then he owes Sting an apology but if it was Sting himself then he was tempting fate just a little bit too much so I don't I certainly don't blame Rollins for him being injured at all I really don't I I either put that down to Sting or I put that down to whoever came up with the idea but still it's even Sting Sting should have said look I will do this and this and this but this is going to be too wear and tear on me right yeah maybe like that's a bit much yeah I think it's I don't think it's right to to put the blame on Rollins um, and I'm sad that Sting is finished and that he's retired. You, you know, even if an, a proper official statement hasn't gone out yet, he has. You know, it's, it's basically been confirmed by everyone, right? So, um, but that, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up here. Uh, W4RD96, or WARD, if that's the way it's going. Uh, I always get that name, I just don't know how to say it. Um, if we think Dash and Dawson can get over on the main roster these days, Matt, would you uh, like to answer that one? Uh, or the Revival, as they're now called? Uh, I liked it. I didn't mind it when it was the mechanics. They would like the mechanics for like a couple of weeks and then like they, they just kept calling I prefer back. it than the Revival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like that name. Um... Either. I think they could get over, but in a similar thread to how um, Kid and Cesaro got over. Okay. Like, less the fact that they are um, a charismatic team, just more the fact that they are damn good. Like, they're a get damn good team. I get you. Uh, I don't think they'll have as much selling points as Cesaro and Kid have. I think Cesaro and Kid are just far superior in the oh ring. yeah but it's like I'm, <coughs> I'm sort of like comparing them sort of similar to like in the sort of like the Enzo and Cass sort of thing like yeah. they're the, they're the charisma like they're the entertaining team yeah yeah I, I think it's um, I think they have a decent chance but I think anyone who's getting if you ask this question about anyone in NXT and whether they can get over to the main roster I think you have to bring up the case of Tyler Breeze. I think you have to bring yeah. up um, a guy who had a gimmick that could work, someone who we knew and was proven could wrestle at a very high level, right? Um, just going to the main roster, and I'm going to say it right now, I don't like using this word too much because people overuse it, but he was buried. Absolutely yeah. he was buried. And um, they'd be in a tag division with guys more established and they just don't seem interested in helping newer talent get into that fold that's the only thing I can say about it really um, you know if you look at the Ascension right oh no let's not talk about the Ascension yeah. I've, what, what, it still stings 
I mean, for what it's worth, and maybe I, maybe I'm in the minority here. I do think Dash and Dawson are better as a team than the Ascension. I think the Ascension were helped by great booking for them in NXT. Yeah, agreed. But still, I don't think that's going to stop the the main roster and the management looking at them in very much the same way as they did the Ascension and having these guys just basically be glorified jobbers. And there's a very likely job that will the chance that that will happen. So. It's uh, it, I think I tell you what's hard for these guys if they're thinking about if they really want to get called up and they really want to make a, an impact on the main roster, it's hard for them because there's nothing they can really do to improve their chances of being used correctly. They just have to be at the right place at the right time, yep. with, with people that they've never met and probably would likely never meet, just thinking about something at the right moment. Mm-hmm. You have to have all the stars aligned for you, and if it isn't, then you become like Tyler Breeze. Which is uh, a tragedy story. So, Kyler's two thousand asks if we think WWE should use NXT as the second brand instead of SmackDown uh, as SmackDown uh, being the second brand to Raw. That would require them to start airing it on USA and not specifically on the network, so that would not sell the network. But I get your point. Um, I'm all for it if USA are fine only having a single hour show because. I don't want NXT to be two hours. Yeah. And the news flash is USA are not going to accept an a, a, an hour less for a show that isn't proven. They just won't accept it. So, and while I would like them to do it, because it would be comp- it would be like a second show that's completely unique and disconnected from Raw. Right? It's it's something completely alternative. Um, and I think there's far more potential than trying to get people bought into NXT as a brand as than trying to convince people that SmackDown's relevant again. USA just isn't going to... like SmackDown gets 1.5 million views each week. It's safe. It's irrelevant, but it's safe. Um, NXT, at very max, if everyone is watching it on the WWE Network, it's just the maximum amount of subscribers that they have, which is only around about 1.5 million at tops, right? So the way that USA is going to look at it is that, yeah, you can put it on this show, but you can only guarantee at very most that a very small slice of the people that would watch SmackDown would suddenly start watching NXT. USA just ain't going to do it, you know. Um, And I think it's a shame because I think if they buy into this uh, idea of having like an alternative brand, Matt, it could pay dividends for them down the line. But there's so many things in the way of it there. The one hour and the USA. Whether or not WWE wants to do something about it is kind of irrelevant. They've got a contract signed, right? So I wonder, um, actually, in terms of <coughs> excuse me, um, them just moving to USA, how that changes their contract and how long they have to have SmackDown dead set as being on that show before WWE could even attempt any changes. So, um, Bottom line there, Matt, I wonder if you agree with me here, is uh, yeah, I think it would be a good idea, just ain't going to happen. That's really um i don't know i think it's because i'm still in the hope of sort of like <clears throat> i don't know i'm probably still sort of thinking back in the time where i was like i really did love it when it was a separate thing or well, smackdown was his own thing and it yeah was really mix. yeah yeah um, you want to see undertaker well guess somebody's watching smackdown tonight in an ideal world, if there was a brand split, I would make it so there wasn't individual pay-per-views. That's the only problem that I had with the brand split. You started having some very mediocre pay-per-views filled with matches you really oh, yeah. didn't care that much about. But um, Filler. <coughs> excuse me, I've had a cough all week, guys. I do apologise. Um, but it's a fact here that um, with WWE in there. There's a lot of talk recently about a brand split and whether or not WWE in, and SmackDown as a whole. I think it's because Shane coming around the very idea. It's just I just like I said I just don't think it's going to happen. Maybe I'm pissing on people's fireworks and people getting excited. I'm like no, it's not. But I like your idea, Kylos, but I just don't see it happening. They've got too many financial restrictions and contracts in place, and SmackDown is irrelevant but safe. That's my best description of it. It'll always get. 1.5 million viewers um, and as long as it keeps doing that keeps ticking along there's really nothing else to say so there we are now Matt we have oh sorry one more question Kane St. Dennis asks who is the worst world champion of all time 
Ooh. I have picked two for the World Heavyweight Championship, WCW, and two for the WWE Championship. Oh, no, one for the WWE Championship. Okay. Oh, no, two. Sorry, I have got two. I've got two for both. Is there any that go- comes out to the top of your head there, Matt? Well, it depends on the worst. <laughs> Let's not forget, at one point, the Brian Kendrick was champion. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. During sure. a championship scramble match. Yeah, uh, yeah. Interim champion, but yeah, sure. Go on. Swagger? That's a good pick. Very decent. I have two worse than that, though. For the okay. World Heavyweight title alone. Do you want to hear my, hear my world, world Heavyweight Championship? Go on. I think the easy one to pick out is David Arquette. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah, and then you got to remember the fact that Tank Abbott was world champion at one stage. Mm. So yeah, enjoy that. I think you're probably looking at the two there. WWE Championship. I was never a fan. Maybe some people are probably going to go fucking ballistic at me for saying this. Sid Vicious. I think he's shit. I think he's never been good. <laughs> and at some points with his with his uh, promos, he's come off as a little bit brain dead. You know, I don't. I have half the brain you do. Actually, came out of his mouth. So. Yeah. I think he's very overrated. He was champion. People just didn't care about his matches. He just wasn't. I would ask people to name me one very, very good singles match with Sid Vicious in it. And I think you would struggle. My other one, Matt, is The Miz as the worst world cha- WWE champion of world time. Oh. He was just a body to put in there so he could facilitate The Rock's return to not even rival with him he rivaled with Cena who was not even the champion so yeah. as the champion Rock felt so little of him that he didn't even bother really dealing with him that much yeah so yeah Miz I think he's probably one of the worst uh, especially with the, how, he, how he's looking now how he was champion he was basically flavour of like six months and, si- and since so after I, that I quite enjoyed some of it it was probably the back and forth with him and um, Riley that I enjoyed yeah, but even then, you look at where Riley is now. You look at where uh, Miz is now. Just like yeah. it, it didn't really elevate them f- permanently, right? If if anything, it, you know, they once they once they had done their job and they had done what they were told to do, there was really nothing else that WWE. They never looked at them properly. Uh, Miz, they looked at him as a good little employee, and this was um, his reward was to be a body with the title that The Rock could basically do his thing. Right, so. I'm trying to remember how he even won it in the first place. He cashed in against Randy Orton. That's it. That. Talking of that trivia, Matt, we have a little bit of that later on. So you better get your uh, get your get your thinking cap on because uh, you've got questions to be asked. True. But before then, Matt, we have the draft. Actually, I have a question. <gasps> okay, do tell. I very much apologise for this. Okay. I didn't get a single notification of it on my phone or anything but mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's about two weeks old okay third of march sure uh praje i apologize mm-hmm. he he wonders if he's the only one who is loving tom phillips on commentary on nxt what do you think, Matt? Tom Phillips on NXT. I quite enjoy Tom Phillips on NXT. Oh, you do? Um, I do. I think... I think it's pretty... I think he's he fills a good role. I mean, I, it's, I'm... I mean, we're not going to get... Um, like, Byron and all that lot on there anymore, where we could have the wonderful sort of interactions that we used to get but then obviously Kevin Owens is isn't on Raw anymore yeah. there isn't on NXT anymore yeah, yeah. Um, I don't mind him I quite like Todd Todd Phillips on it I'm going to completely and utterly disagree with you I actually think that his commentary is pretty bad I actually think he's bringing Corey Graves down mm. personally I honestly thought that um, I, I, w- I was willing to give him a chance but when I keep listening to him it's a different dynamic on commentary I don't I think Rich Brennan was better that's my that's my personal opinion I with Tom Phillips he he's got it's not even that he's so bad right I just don't it just doesn't work that well for me I just don't 
enjoy the chemistry that he has with uh, Corey Graves that well. I um, I thought that honestly they the, the the group that they had before I think was doing a really good job. I think a lot of that had to do with Rich Brennan doing a really good job and Corey Graves. Now either it's Corey Graves kind of um, resting on his laurels a bit, but I, even I don't think he's been that good recently, and that's been alongside him doing the commentary with with, with Tom Phillips. So. I have to um, say that no, I'm not a big fan of what they're doing at the moment. But that's that's just I me. Know. So yeah, you've divided us there. So there you are. There you are. Uh, any other questions from Twitter, Matt? While you're on uh, there, that's it. That's it. So of course you can send us through. Uh, uh, oh, excuse me. Any um, uh, any social media stuff and all that. Also. Uh, so now, definitely, without any further questions, now we have our draft. Indeed. Uh, are you taking Raw or SmackDown, Matt? I believe I was taking SmackDown. Okay, I'll take Raw. I'll take Raw. And you get the second pick. We're going to do I ten, do. ten each like they did in the original one. And the rules are as follows. Uh, you can draft champions. <coughs> if that champion is part of a group, then you draft that group the same way that uh, they did the original Okay, one. so we're going with the whole, if what? So if I pick Sheamus, I get the entire nation? No, they have to be champions that are part of a group. Okay, if, so if I get, if with Big E, I get Kofi. Yeah, you get the entire New Day, right? Yeah. So, cool. um, and it's obviously on the same thing that those titles will be defended uh, on, they will be defended, they can be defended on both shows, but they're primarily belonging to that brand. They could they perform regularly on yeah. whatever one they've been picked on. Yeah. Um, apart from that, there's ten and uh, no injuries. They you can choose part time guys, but obviously you have to put that in, in perspective that you can't pick all part time guys and not actually have a roster to wrestle. But that's down to us. So Matt, I am going first. Yep. With my number one draft pick, I draft Seth Rollins. Okay. A very fine choice. Mm-hmm. Who do you go as number one? My number one choice is Cesaro. Cesaro? Wow. Okay. All right. My number two choice, John Cena. KO. Kevin Owens. Mm hmm. My number three. AJ Styles. I got AJ. Oh yeah. How'd you like that? Fair enough. Okay. Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn. Dean Ambrose is my number four pick. Fair enough. Go ahead. Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd. I pick the New Day. As the current tag team champions. Okay. As my number five. Before I put my next one, are we allowing NXT talent being called up? No. It has to be no. current roster. Oh, you son of a bitch. That was my next choice. <laughs> I had like one specific, like if you pick the tag team, then I'd pick a tag team. Oh, I can't have Enzo and Cass. No, you can't, no. Because technically once they come into the main roster after the draft, they would be free agents. So Yeah. Your number six. Oh, you throw me out of whack. To be fair, I would take Neville. Neville, he's one of my. He was one of mine actually. My number six is Brock Lesnar. Fair enough. Mm. Uh, the Lucha Dragons. As number seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess as one of them is champion, I will give you the pair of them. It doesn't make sense to take them both apart, I guess. So I, I will give I'd, well, I'd only want Kalisto, but... Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but going off the rules, I get them both. My uh, number seven is the Divas Champion, Charlotte. Okay. I would take Paige. My number... No, number... Sorry, what, what am I on now? Number nine, is it? No, yes. number eight, sorry. Is it eight? Yeah, it's number eight. Uh, my number eight is Sasha Banks. I'll take Becky. My number nine is Braun Strowman. Hmm. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Your number nine. My number nine. You've already taken quite a few off my list. (laughs) 
Still quite mind. a few big names out there. Yeah, that is very true. And I'll probably take Jericho. Jericho. All right, so number 10, my final draft pick. I am going to take Roman Reigns. Is it because I took some of the other ones? Yeah, it was. Because you said I took Neville, so it's like because Roman Reigns. Was I had no- Neville, 11. Cesaro, Kevin Owens all in my all in my starting list. Yeah, Roman Reigns is my number ten. Fair enough. My last pick. Oh, no, damn it again! I was just like, I would take shit. That's an NXT call up. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. There's a few big, big ones even in my list that you can still take. I had a plan for my SmackDown. <laughs> You're going to make it the clear alternative. I'll take it back to, like, good glory when Heyman ran it days. <laughs> like, you, why do you want the little people? Because they're amazing. Look. <laughs> um. Oh, my final. Do you know what? Sandow. Sandow is number 10. So you would pass up Bray Wyatt, Dolph Ziggler, and uh, Bubba That's Ray true. was actually in, in my list as well. Bubba Fair Ray, enough. Actually. So that is our list. Um, I have to say that I've got all the Shield guys. Yep. I have John Cena, Brock Lesnar. I had the tag team champions, The New Day. I think I might have got this one. I think I might have got it. But it's down to the fans to decide. I'll put up a uh, a poll or something and it will link up on but that. Yeah, it's like on place value. Give um, mine time. Yeah, yeah. It's so, that whole dream. It's a dream booking scenario. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, I'm quite surprised. I mean, Cesaro was in my list, but he was my number nine, not my number one. So I'd make him my champion. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I've got AJ Styles as well on my roster. Just want to add that in there as well. So. I know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's our draft, guys. <clears throat> you guys can decide which one had the better one, um, and then we can go from there. Now, Matt, we're halfway through the show. That only means one thing. It is time for your super sexy, amazingly difficult, but intense, awesome challenge. <laughs> I can't help but feel you've been watching too much of the Edge and Christian show. That totally reeks of awesomeness, right? I, I, no, 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 it doesn't. Oh, actually, Matt, I've been watching some of the um, the series because Matt, uh, stay, you know, my, my wife has been watching it, and um, she's actually like some of the later episodes are a little bit better off. I will say that. Like, I, the, the first I disagree. One is the worst one. Really? I, I I genuinely tried watch another episode again. Like not this. I didn't watch the ep- episode one. I I decided. Oh, is that like? episode three or four or whatever i was like ah I'll give it a try i'll yeah. give it i'll give it another go and no i didn't. got less time into this episode than i had in the previous time oh wow i thought the first episode was probably the weakest episode they did personally. i could not give two fucks about this show oh really okay uh, to be honest if my wife wasn't watching it i probably wouldn't go out of my way of watching it but i can understand that why some people would enjoy it later on down the line or anything like that but uh but still Anyway, Matt, you're procrastinating because you're afraid of getting these questions wrong. Okay. Well, questions, but this challenge. This week is entrance theme lyrics. Now, I, I was thinking of maybe putting up like entrance theme musics, but I, that is a copyright nightmare, and I have no intention of doing that. So, yep. the lyrics will have to suffice. This is your first challenge. I will say a couple of lines from a song. Okay. And... I can tell you that only one of these, one of the five, is not currently wrestling, but they have done fairly recently, recently, as in 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 the last five years. Okay. Okay. First one. Here we go. Number one. I've awakened from a deep sleep. You're all weak. You're living in the agony of defeat. I am <sighs> the master of your whole heap. I am the pastor. Flock you like sheep. Who is the, what song entrance theme? Jericho. That, it is Jericho. Ding 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 ding. He gets it right. Well done, Matt. That's one out of one. Well done. Um, I th- I actually thought you won't struggle with that one, but that's probably the easiest. Oh, great. 
I like how you're saying you might struggle, but that's the easy one. Yeah, yeah, I kind of went a bit evil with this one, but who knows? Who knows? Okay. Number two, you got one out of one, Matt. Well done, well done. Number two, I'm sick of all these people talking out their heads. I've never understood a damn thing that they said. From words to actions, never knowing what they're about, I guess I'll have to chew them up and spit them out. Whose entrance theme does that belong to? Go again. You like it again? One more time. Yeah, one more time. I'm sick of all these people talking out their heads. I've never understood a damn thing that they said. From words to actions, never knowing what they're about. I guess I'll have to chew them up and spit them out. <sighs> Do we take a wild guess? Ziggler? It is not Dolph Ziggler. Is it Riley? It is not Riley. Oh, whose is it? Well, you've got it wrong now, so I can tell you. It's Batista. Dave Batista. You may remember Saliva singing it in his oh, theme song. Fuck. Yes. Uh, well, you failed this week, Matt. You didn't get all five right, but we're going to continue Oh, come anyway. on. What was... Well, just give me the next one. I'm going to give you all of them anyway. I'm going to give you all of them. Oh, okay. Uh, so the next one, they only get harder, in my opinion, but here we go. Had the weight of the world on my shoulders, felt like a lion in a room full of vultures. Tried to slow me up, but the bird got focused. No shine, but the world still noticed. Now I'm about to earn this. I would not know this, personally. Do you have any clue whatsoever? <laughs> the lyrics make me want to say Wyatt. Is there any... Oh, there is actually lyrics in that song. I didn't even realise. But no, it's not the Wyatts, no. It's not the Wyatts. I'll give you one more guess. Any any others? <sighs> one clue. Main roster? Yep, main roster. I'll give you that. Oh, okay. All of these are main roster. There's no NXT... Um, right. Contingent. Okay, so I would I wasted a guess on Alex Riley then. Yeah. Uh... No, no idea. I have to put a no, for you. no, no. It's the Usos. That's part of their entrance music. So there you go, Usos. Okay. It only gets harder. Here we go. Number four. I made it here in the spotlight. Woke up to see my life in the shade. Now that's not quite. Hustling every day, I'm on the way to that sharp light. It's my destiny to be bigger. Yeah, I got fight. Who is that? This is incredibly difficult. Incredibly difficult. I would be shocked if any of our fans got some of these. Is it AJ? No, it's not AJ Styles. Considering what it only seems to be the lyric in that song is they don't want them. That just pretty much is the only thing in it. So, Do you, I'll give you. I'll give you another hint. It is a female wrestler. It's a female wrestler. Do you want it one more time? Yeah, go on. I made it here in the spotlight. Woke up, see my life in the shade. Now that's not quite hustling every day. I'm on my way to that shot. Naomi. Line. No, it's not. Oh, I was so <laughs> confident. It is Sasha Banks. There you are. The entrance music that I... Oh, no, it's just... Oh, you, can, it. you can hear it in your head. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last one. Let's see if you can get this one. At least get two correct, okay? Am I what you want? Am I who you follow? Don't try to fight it. You can't deny this is perfection personified. I think you might get this one. I think you might. Do you want it one more time? Yeah. Alright. Am I what you want? Am I who you follow? Don't try to fight it. You can't deny this is perfection 
personified. The only person I could think of doesn't have lyrics in their entrance. I like that you could so quiet while you're thinking. <laughs> I'm genuine. The worst part is I'm genuinely sort of thinking to myself like, what about like you sort of like trying? You know how sort of like if I pair pair it up with sort of like yeah, yeah, I get you, the I get character. You. Would you like a hint for this one to give you? A I'll bit take of a hint. It is a former NXT graduate. So it's on the main roster now, but it's a former NXT graduate. I want you to get this one so badly. I'm sure there's one or two of our fans right now that know it dead off. Give us a guess, Matt. Give us a guess. Uh, a former NXT. Yeah. Oh! Big Breeze! Yeah, it is Ton of Breeze! Yay! Nice. You got it. You got it. You got it. Can you is li- I, What I like about this challenge is that once you know what it is, you can hear the song with the lyrics. Yeah. In your head, so. Like just then, where I felt like an absolute dick with. Uh, Sasha Banks is what Sasha yeah. Banks. <laughs> I would like you guys to uh, give me your genuine thoughts of how many you got correct in the in the in the comment section below. <coughs> uh, there's a few here I probably wouldn't have got. The Usos one is probably the hardest. I don't think anyone would have got that one to be honest. Um, but uh, maybe the other ones. I think Jericho probably the easiest. Matt, would you would you agree? Jericho is probably the easiest. It's hard. I was trying mm-hmm. to speak it out out. out Away Without from going, the... I am the master and I'm the yeah. best. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the kind of the way that it goes kind of goes like that anyway. But um, yeah, Matt, you got two out of five in your very first super sexy, amazingly difficult, which it definitely was amazingly difficult, but intense, awesome challenge. Two out of five. Ooh. Um, are you thinking that you might do better next time with a different challenge? I like to think so. All right. It next can only time... get better. Next time is just plain old trivia for you. So you'll be able okay. to get some uh, wrestling trivia. We can test you and see whether you can get the, the clean sweep, shall we say. So there we are. Hope you guys enjoyed that as well. Uh, NXT report card. There is no one on the NXT report card this week. And you may be going, well, guys, you didn't do NXT report card last week. Uh, no, we didn't. But the difference is I have watched NXT this week. It's just a matter of... Um, actually trying to fit in the show I just, with the Raw review about to come up Matt we just don't have time for that so. I haven't watched NXT this week I decided I would watch a horsewomen playlist and watch an old NXT match instead oh, okay well, well I can't exactly blame you for watching um, you know their line of work Sasha NXT. versus Sasha versus Becky yeah yeah which is a great match um, a lot of this week on NXT was simply setting up some of the shows. It was like the first time they actually announced Sami Zayn and uh, Nakamura. Um, they had um, they announced Asuka versus Bailey in in that match. Yep. Um, they had a few other matches. They had Gargano I, up on the show and stuff like that. Speaking of that, have you seen the WWE video package that they put out for Nakamura? I did. Yeah, it's pretty really good. Yeah, like. Um, just singing the praises of their video production side again. They're always just so good. The so yeah. Slow when it comes to that. So, um, but yeah, um, I think NXT this week is a decent show. You got some good wrestling there. And uh, if you don't know any of the stuff uh, for NXT and any of the matches or anything, then obviously this will be right up your alley because it sets up the card quite nicely. And when you start hearing about these matches, you're talking about. Bailey versus Asuka, that's got any... Sorry, I, I love the horsewomen, but that match alone, I think, does have the triple threat match blown out of the water at WrestleMania. That's going to be like a clash of titans in their next I year. don't know. Um, Nakamura making his debut against Sami Zayn. That's going to be amazing. You've got the title match, Joe against Bala. Maybe some people won't be too interested in that because it's the second time, but... Um, what's the other... You've got Ares against Corbin, right? That's a that's a proper either either way match though, isn't it? 
You've got American Alpha against the Revival for the tag titles. Yep. Which is going to be uh, a lot of fun. I will say, though, that while I like uh, American Alpha, G- Gable and, and um, Jordan, for those who don't know their name now. Why can't they just be uh, Gable and Jordan? Uh, Why do they have to have a team name? Uh, yeah. I, to be honest, I, I found it really weird that I I thought the exact same thing. I was like, I don't like the team name, um, and it's not so much. Oh, well, sorry, I don't like the team name. I don't like the fact they have a team name. I don't know why. Maybe it's just me loving them as they were. But yeah, I still, they're still great. The match I had against Vaud Villains this week, though, I just didn't think that much highly of. Um, I mean, you look at the fact that last week was the only match that was on was Samoa Joe against Sami Zayn. It was their two out of three falls match that lasted near on an hour. Yeah, and um, this week you had like a main event that was like um, on of what we've seen on screen it was um, less than 10 minutes so and like I said the Ford villains they're, they're fine and like, both these teams are okay it's just that it just wasn't that particularly exciting for me but, uh, but still there's still plenty of stuff to see up on NXT it's still a good show each week and the report card will be back soon um, we will be doing that um, as normal it's just things are so busy recently that's the, the only reason and uh, with with the super sexy amazingly difficult but intense awesome challenge um, you know it's uh, we're adding more and more segments onto the show and brings a bit of uniqueness to the show you know it makes things a little bit more fresh so there we are there Matt alright then Matt it is time for our raw review indeed uh, fresh off of a roadblock event that neither of us watched and uh, reinforced our thoughts that it wouldn't change any of the plans for Wrestlemania do you know one thing I was really annoyed, actually? Like, I, know I saw a little piece of Roadblock. I just didn't have the time to watch it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, like I saw on some online forum, like, some guy bitching. So, like, uh, it just looked like a glorified house show. It's like, what the fuck do you expect? If it looked like a glorified house show, that's because it's a glorified house show. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. So, it looks exactly what it is. I... Uh, I think it's because WWE started promoting it on like weekly Raw actually in terms of storylines maybe that got some people thinking it was a legitimate pay-per-view or anything like that but uh, no. if anything having it a little but it's bit like, different it from... was Beast that's like Beast in the East was like that yeah Beast but nobody whinged about like oh they didn't have a full Titan Tron they had fucking Brock Lesnar on that one yeah and you know what uh, I liked about uh, Beast in the East is that it gave you a different sort of atmosphere right at the very least, that these live specials that they're doing, it's a different like there's a different stage because they don't use the HD stage for it, right? Yeah. Um, it looks different. One of the things I hate about the pay per views that they do nowadays is that it's the same stage over and 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 over again. It gets yeah. very fucking boring. Really, it does. Like we are only going to get a new one, like for Mania. Yeah, no, they don't even do one for SummerSlam, which is their second biggest event of the year. They don't even do a change for SummerSlam. And I look at some of the sets that they used to use for SummerSlam, and I'm like, man, oh, really not cool. even just for SummerSlam, but like, like even just for some of the other. Like we we've gone on about this before, like, yeah. but like I will always remember like Armageddon. Oh, the sets for like, those, yeah. I just I just distinctly remember like Kane walking through what was essentially looked like a ruined city. Yeah. Oh, Matt, what about the? Um... Uh, what was it now? They did like a Royal Rumble where they did it all, all Roman style. So they had like the plinths up and everything. And as they oh, out, God, yeah. Oh, that was... Uh, one of these... Or like Helen... Even something as simple as Helen a Cell when you came out... You essentially walked out of, you know, half of a cell. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was the set they used when Daniel Bryan won the US title against Miz, actually. So I remember that one. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some sets out there that are just amazing, but you just don't get them anymore, right? Um, some of the SummerSlam ones were great. I remember the one time they had one. I think it was maybe 2007, 2008. I'm not entirely sure. But like, they had this screen, mat that kind of arced over the tops so as the wrestlers were walking in. The screen is like above them, looking down at them, but it was arced and tilted. Oh, it was beautiful. It really yeah. was. It was so good. But... Or, better still, or even something as simple as, you remember, like, Night of Champions? Yeah. yeah. Where there was just, like, that banner sign of every championship. Now... I couldn't give a fuck. Yeah, now there's nothing like that at all, right? And, oh, what's the the other one I was thinking of there that was um, really good? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head now what one I was thinking. I'll probably, it'll, probably, it'll probably come back to me, but as you say there, Matt. Oh, sorry, Backlash, when they had the hanging, so arcing steel things, which was still simple, 
but it was like the logo, the backlash logo, the hooks, right? The hanging hooks. Yeah, like the meat hooks. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, come on, that's not even hard, right? But still. You know it's bad, Matt, when the old SmackDown set looked more like amazing and over the top than the current set that they use for pay-per-views. It's oh, what, the like, SmackDown fist? Yeah. Right. It looks more lash and over the top than a, than Raw. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It really does, but uh, still. Well, we went on a on a tangent with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> WWE has about three weeks, Matt, to build up Mania, three Raws, and how they build up the lower card and help some of their rivalries get off the ground. Well, I guess we'll, uh, we're going to find out right off now on the, on the Raw review. This week's Raw emanated from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A, 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 one of the crowds that wasn't too keen on Roman Reigns. So, and there's quite a few of them still Gee, I up. wonder why. Yeah. Starts off, Matt, with The New Day versus Rusev and Del Rio. That's right, a tag team match starting the show. Yeah? That's it. <coughs> it, it, felt, it felt odd. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope this cough goes away soon, by the way. I've, I, I've, I went to the doctors and got a- antibiotics um, because it's been around for like two weeks and I'm like, it's getting yeah. worse. So hopefully by the time next week I will not be like oh, uh, eh, 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 and dying here on the podcast. So um, They ask us uh, to see what they did to the League of Booty on Twitter. I don't have Twitter, so I didn't really see, but okay. And advertise, Matt, that now you can buy a New Day t-shirt that gets shipped in a Booty O's cereal box. Don't, don't, you, you had to mention it again, didn't you? It's, Matt, it's, it's brilliant. I, I want one. I want one. I, I, my wallet was opening and just going, go on, Matt. Go, go, go on, Matt. He was telling you and telling me, go on, go on, just go, go, go buy it. Look, you can have it. Here's my card. There you like, go. Why, why, why? Why can't you have it? Yeah, go on, go on, go get it. And I've been trying to convince myself um, not to partake in it, but come on, it gets come on, it's chipped in a cereal box. That's just amazing. And I just, I, I kind of, I really like the new day T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I honestly do, uh, I do like it. Uh, who knows? I may end up partaking as the weeks roll on, but still. But. And talking of that, I'm not even sure, Matt, if I can pull off a Bootios t-shirt, but I'm going to have to try. Gonna, Is it a Bootios t-shirt? I think it's a Bootios t-shirt, yeah. Um, it's not their unicorn one. you know. Oh, is it not? No, I don't think it is. I thought it was their unicorn one. Yeah. I might have to get that as well, to be honest, because I do like that shirt as well. Now, I'm sure that uh, many fans will tell me, say, well, Tony, you must be really, really happy. You know, you've been begging, Matt. For, for ages for a match to start Raw and they're true I, I got my wish two years later mind you this podcast is over two years old and since then we haven't had a match starting Raw I get my wish so there's a little bit bittersweet there that we had to wait this long for an actual wrestling match to start off the show yeah still that being said this is a strange rivalry to make for Wrestlemania <sighs> You know, League of Nations against New Day. I'm sure... I, I don't care for it. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure New Day, Matt, they're going to get cheered to high heaven. And especially what happened at the end of this match, they're certainly being set up as, as faces. But it's... Um, I just don't think it's a tag team match that many people, including yourself, Matt, and me to a certain degree, will care much about. I think it's just a platform for New Day to do what they do at WrestleMania. But Yeah would have been nice of them to have a long-term storyline that would have culminated at WrestleMania rather than let's just give them a random rivalry for them to deal with. So that seems what it is. Um, and I think the reason why they did it, Matt, is because they want to shoehorn in the League of Nations into some sort of match rather than build up said big storyline for this title, right? But I think there's a common theme with this WrestleMania. I think they're trying to force too many people into matches that they shouldn't be in. Yeah, I think that WrestleMania overall would be a better card if it was trimmed a lot more. I'm not saying the people should miss WrestleMania, but surely that's why you have the um, the Battle Royal, the Andre Joint Battle Royals, to stick those guys in there and have at least to be out there in the ring. Oh yeah, but it seems like they're f- they're literally force they're fucking getting a crowbar and trying to fucking creak open and fit guys in certain situations that they shouldn't be in. That's this. And I'm going to come up to that a little bit more as time goes on. Um, now, Xavier Woods, he's wrestling in this match. 
And I, I feel bad for him. And it's not because he's a bad wrestler. In fact, he's a decent wrestler. But in terms of Big E and athleticism, like, you're not going to beat Big E and you're not going to beat Kofi in just general in-ring awareness and how good he is in the ring. So even being decent behind those two guys, two guys just isn't enough, right? He always comes off like he's the third guy. Uh, even though he's fairly decent, right? It's just that you've got Big E, who I I honestly do believe that if I were in charge of WWE, I would be creating a long-term plan to make Big E a future WWE champion. I honestly think that highly of him, right? Yes. Um, I've said that before. I, I think that highly of him. He's big, Matt. He's athletic. He's got buckets of charisma. And he's a very, very good professional wrestler. And you know what, Matt? He's young, right? That's um, it. One more, con- one more convince one. Yeah, right. Um, talking of this match anyway, Matt, I thought it was good. Not great, but good. It was okay. Rusev tries to lock in the accolade, but Kofi distracts him. Um, not even Barrett and Sheamus can stop up the roll-up pin. Most devastating. The thing is, you're going on about it's good. I was like, it was boring. Yeah, it was a bit, yeah, let's be honest. Um, but... Um, after the, the match, even though the New Day win, the League of Nations give them give them a lengthy beating, building some sympathy up for the New Day. This is a close to a face turn you're going to get for the New Day. And to be honest, I didn't think this is them turning face. They, yeah. They're building up sympathy for the New Day so they can be the faces going against the League of Nations. Which I don't have a problem with. I mean, people are kind of getting behind the New Day anyway. You're seeing, you're hearing New Day rocks chants instead of New Day sucks chants. They're actually getting people That's on it. board. And they deserve to, Matt, because... Oh, Matt, talking of Roman Reigns and him having to go heel before being accepted as a face, the New Day are a pretty good example of that, are they not, right? Yeah. People were not accepting That's them That's what they had faces. to do. Yep. And now everyone loves them, right? I love the New Day. I really do. I really do. Um, afterwards, Dean Ambrose comes on out. He's cheered like a Attitude Era hero. Um... Roman Reigns could only hope to get the same sort of response there. He, Dean Ambrose, Matt, would you agree with this here? He gets the biggest face response in WWE at the moment. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure Easily. That... I don't even have to, like, have to second guess that. Yeah. I'm sure that frustrates um, the hell out of Vince, but listen, it's just the way that the cards have dropped. It's the, the, you know, the fans have chosen their guy, right? They show footage of Ambrose's illegal pinfall on Triple H at Roadblock and how close he was to winning the championship. Ambrose says that Trips learned what happens when he underestimates, under-respects. And after a little bit of chat, Brock Lesnar comes on out. And I'm like, finally, Matt, we can get this story back on fucking track. We only took a two-week break for yeah. no reason. People know my thoughts on the very idea of doing that match for Roadblock and... Ambrose taking the clean loss. Yeah, we've got to build this guy up for Lesnar. Sure. So, uh, Heyman says, Matt, he's the only man currently stopping Ambrose from getting annihilated. Ambrose, of course, says that he doesn't need protecting. But Heyman reaffirms that Ambrose struck it lucky because any match involving Lesnar is the main event of that show. So they are the main event of WrestleMania. No other way to think about it, Matt. The match's story, basically, Matt, what they're building up, we all know this, is how much of an ass-kicking Ambrose can poss- possibly receive yeah. and still survive. That's basically the story that they're going with here. Ambrose says Lesnar looks like ready for a fight now. Uh, instead of kind of responding to that, Heyman sells the fact that WrestleMania is free for new subscribers, then walks off. He expects Lesnar to follow him, but Lesnar's like, well, I don't know, he's kind of there, and he looks like he wants an ass-kicking, so... Yeah, it's sort of like, put... it was almost like one of those sort of, like, like, he sort of turned away, it's like, Paul? Paul? Oh, he's gone. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can uh, go do my business. Um, so Lesnar goes down, he uh, looks like he's going to get ready for a fight, but Ambrose brandishes a crowbar. And of course, Lesnar knows better than to get in the ring and start dealing with someone armed with a crowbar because you can be quite big and be quite beastly, but a crowbar to the head tends to put you down. So yeah, fair play. but it's still a crowbar. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I thought this was a good, a good small little segment. It's great to finally get back to this because we've had two weeks of Ambrose 
basically forgetting that he's got a match with Lesnar at WrestleMania, essentially. Yeah. Like, it's like, uh, you got a match with Lesnar. I know, but I want that belt. It's like... Yeah. Um, and I thought you could have these two weeks to give Ambrose two big victories, build him up for this match against uh, Lesnar. People are still going to expect him to take a kicking, but you have to at least make him seem somewhat legitimate. But I'm okay. It's, it's all right. It's not too much of a problem, I guess. But still. Sin Cara versus Ryback. Kalisto misses uh, his camera shot with the title by dropping it after his ring flip, which I thought was quite funny. I wonder if you caught that, Matt. I didn't catch it, no. Yeah, you know where he's like, he flips over and then he uses the title and he kind of bounces a little bit with the championship while Sin Cara dives up behind him. Yeah, yeah, He yeah. actually dropped the title, so instead of doing that little pose, he had to like go grab the championship. So. <laughs> the legend of Sin Cara lives on, Matt. So Through his teammates. I've got something to pick on Sin Cara with. I've heard, Matt, some people liked his all-black gear. Did you like his all-black gear this week? Mm, nah. Kinda. Here's my thing, Matt. Whenever a luchador wears jet black gear... He's not Mil Muertes. No, he's not. But even not even Mil Muertes does it. He has like the purple, right? But whenever any okay. luchador, any luchador at all wears jet black gear... I think he runs the risk of looking like a gimp sex slave. He honestly does. Like, maybe it's just me, but having like jet black gear and the mask, he he looks yeah. It maybe in some sort of light. Maybe I'm reaching here, but I would just like you. You need to be careful here because you're, you know, yeah, one quite alteration. Can, yeah, on. quite quite easily look a bit gimpy. Yeah, just a little bit gimpy here. So just throw in a zip. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. This is an okay match, not really inspired. It's just, yeah. nah. If you're not that interested... You it did be. what it needed to do. Yeah. It served its purpose. That's right. Ryback gives two ch- shell shocks to Sin Cara, pins him while looking Kalisto dead in the face. After the match, Ryback says that's what happens when a good big guy beats a good little guy and tells Kalisto to put the title on the line at Mania. And I'm like, it's fine. It's a lower tier match for Mania. It's not going to last too long. It's probably going to be like five minutes or something along those lines. But I tell you what, Matt, I'm sure that a certain John Cena isn't happy that the US title has lost a lot of its allure already. But, uh, yeah. you know, I always said it's this terrible. before. terrible. Once, once uh, Cena lost that title, it was, um, it was Cena holding that championship up. It wasn't WWE and there's some change of heart. And once he was going to lose that championship, then things were going to go back to the way they were. And that's kind of how it is. And if you're saying to me, oh, well, at least they're giving them a match. I'm like, it's it's Kalisto against Ryback. This is not a high-class, top-tier no. match. You might like both guys, but be honest, they're mid-carders, right? That's the bottom line of it here. Um, look at like the heights of the US Championship. Cena was wrestling Rollins as the United States champion, a champion and putting both titles on the line. It was suddenly yeah. became hugely relevant. Uh, Rollins was a double champion for a while until that changed, you know? So it's just... That's it. Um, and Cena used it to, you know, put on for a while some of the best matches of Raw. Yeah. For, for a good few months. A, a couple that will probably fit into his best matches of all time, DVD or something along those lines. Yeah. I'm sure they would. Um, Do you know what? You could probably just make a DVD of his United States Championship matches and I probably wouldn't care like I'd probably get it yeah that's what I mean yeah I probably would be quite interested in purchasing it because it would be quite a fine yeah if you, even if you don't like John Cena it's still going to highlight some guys that clearly you do like because you wrestled everyone on the roster that's why it was so good that's why it was fun but Matt we were only talking about six months ago that that Seth Rollins match happened probably even yeah. less <coughs> so um, yeah I'm sure Cena isn't too happy about that but still we knew it was going to happen. It was inevitability. Stephanie McMahon comes on out to announce Triple H coming to the ring. He cuts pretty much the same promo that he did against Ambrose about facing authority. Talking about we're all losers and how we all hate our bosses. He's basically said that for about three weeks nonstop. So there's that. They're really trying yeah. to get over that, that over. You know the spiel. Yeah. That being said, Triple H cuts that sort of promo really well. So even though he's done it a lot... If there's anyone that's going to cut that promo and make it feel like um, like scathing, Triple H is a good promo guy when he's got the right promo that he enjoys delivering. Um, he can deliver. I'm not saying this was fantastic by any means, but I'm just saying he's generally he's not a bad promo guy. His trips, he's pretty he's pretty decent. 
He tells us that we uh, love Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns because they give us hope, despite the fact that all the boos came out of Reigns' name seems to suggest otherwise on that point. Yeah. Reigns? Yeah. Mm. Uh, um, the booing, actually, for Roman Reigns made things a little bit awkward for later on in the show. We'll explain that a little, a little bit later. Dolph Ziggler comes on out, suited and booted, with on those thin ties that, for some reason, I fucking despise. Don't know why. Pet hate. Don't like thin ties, Matt. Never have. I think they look weak. Proper tie. Yeah, you need a proper tie that fans out properly at the bottom. You know, it gets gets broader as it goes on. Thin ties, Matt. Just don't, just don't understand it. Fair enough. Do you, have, do you have any thin ties, Matt? I don't. No. That's why we're best friends. Man tie. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> people are like, what the fuck are you talking about, Tony? Don't worry, it's uh, you should know I'm strange by now. You should know this. Ziggler says he's fed up with being um, threatened with termination every day, coming to work and thinking that he's going to be fired, but he won't quit. And I'm like, why won't you quit? If you're threatened with being fired all the time, just quit and go to someplace else and you'll be happy where you work. Money's not everything, Dolph. Jeez. I was going to say, did you not hear the New Japan guy? Yeah, exactly, right? Go to New Japan, you know? They'll treat you well, give you good money. You'd love what you're doing. Um, you don't have to do it every day. Yeah, exactly, right? Trip stop, uh, stops his wife from going all Vince McMahon on his ass by firing him. Uh, or, what I like to say, hocking up a lurgy and then firing him in the middle of doing so. So, yeah, that's probably the best way to describe it. Trips extends a hand of allegiance to Ziggler, saying, well, you know what, everything could change if you come into the fold. And Ziggler throws it back in his face, calling Stephanie an idiotic, egotistical wife. So she gives him a slap. Of course. Of course. And tells him that she'll break his spirit. I thought she might go like, I'll break your body, make you wrestle every night, which is funny because that's what WWE does anyway. So, And that's exactly word for word what um, Vince said to Reigns. Yeah, exactly. Um, she sets him up in a match with Triple H later on. Initially, Trips doesn't look too pleased, but that kind of fades into him just staring down Ziggler. The first match Triple H has had on Raw in fucking... I don't even know. God knows how long, Matt. It's been... Three years, they said. Three, yeah, I think Curtis Axel was probably his last match. Just oh, tell God. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the whole thing of him? I need to fight Curtis Axel. And then he was like, yeah, you know what? I don't really need to fight him, so fuck Curtis Axel. And that was basically... Yeah. So. Good for him. And the, the idea back then that Curtis Axel was on a level that Triple H was calling him out is just hilarious. In it was a legitimate threat. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think it's quite funny that WWE says they're in the reality era but it's the only company in the world where the employers can slap their employees and not face uh, legal sanction for doing so oh god yeah and it's recorded and broadcasted to the world so it's not like if evidence is a problem but WWE for you the reality era everyone the reality era Sami Zayn versus The Miz Kevin Owens is on commentary and I'm going to Rant a little bit about WWE again. About them bringing up NXT stars and not helping them. And I think people know where I'm going with this. Matt, how many vignettes has Zami Zayn has he, ha- has he had since he came to the main roster? Uh, he has not. He has not had any. How many video packages has he had? Uh, does his entrance video count as a video package? Nope. No. Tell me. Have um, they had any videos describing what he did in NXT since he re No. No. Don't you not think that's a little bit of a fucking problem right there? Yeah. Sure. For you and me, Matt, we love Sami Zayn. We're watching him on NXT. NXT now. He's going to face Nakamura. Always great with the world. What about for the two to close to three million viewers who do not watch NXT? Yeah. Yeah, you're not really giving this guy a chance. Why are you not educating these fans to look at this guy as if he's somewhat of a big deal? That he is a guy that you really should be worth looking at and taking advantage of, right? And, you know, that it's it's a good thing to watch him wrestle every single week, that you should be excited. They... Well, the one thing I don't like is the fact that they, did they not learn anything from um, Breeze? Yeah, yeah. They don't matter. They didn't learn anything. They think they they think they did Breeze perfectly, in their eyes. And I'm like, they have all these tools, Matt. All these tools at their disposal. They have video packages. They have the network now. They have um, 
matches that they could do on Raw. They could, they've got commentary. They've got flashback um, segments that they could air. They've got uh, proper vignettes aired with Sami Zayn. They've well, they got all the tools. Well, they could have just sort of done, oh, and this has been happening. Let's take a look at the man known as Sami Zayn. Yeah. Like, three minutes, if that, done. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm like, they've got all these tools at their disposal, but they refuse to use them. And these guys are, they're getting set up to fail. Why should these people in the crowd care about Sami Zayn? And I'm saying that as a fan of his, right? As a fan that does care a lot about Sami Zayn, who likes Sami Zayn and wants him to succeed. Why should these people care about him? WWE needs to start educating them. You know, he needs to teach them who the fuck Sami Zayn is before it ends up becoming a Tyler Breeze-like situation. Where suddenly the fans are like, well, you never told us who this guy is or where he came from or what his aspirations are or what his character is. So we don't care. Like, right? all I know is that, like, if I was looking at this, like, an outside, like, I don't watch NXT or anything like that. Yeah. I take one look at Sami Zayn. He's a skinny ginger guy who likes ska music and flat caps. Yeah, that's pretty much it. When we all know that there's so much more to Sami Zayn to highlight about this guy. Yeah. If Raw weren't so dead set on airing completely live content, and at very least at some point maybe airing matches that have happened beforehand, in very specific cases, you know what I would have done? I would have aired his match with Cesaro on NXT. Or just in a, as part of a highlight or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I... Listen, like I was worried at the lack of response that Zayn got. Pittsburgh is not a horrible city for fan response. They're not. So when he came out here and he didn't really get much of a response, I'm like, he's going to have to work so hard in his matches because WWE is not going to give him any helping, uh, helping hand whatsoever. I think he might be a little bit safe with the fact that it is mania around the corner. Yeah, but I don't know, Matt. I just I look at these guys. I'm like, WWE, why are you not using these tools at your disposal? That oh, you've yeah. proven that you can use them before. You've done it before. I don't understand. I really don't. Either all their video production uh, crew are so bogged up with stuff doing things for the network, or WWE is just hell bent on not using them for what, what, what for some reason. Yeah. Why would you not use vignettes and video packages? I have no idea. I really don't. But. Still, uh, in this match, um, Owens tries to exa- attack Zayn, but Miz accidentally comes in for the save, paying him back for apparently walking out on him on SmackDown. Zayn hits the Haluva kick off the distraction, and inadvertently, Owens helps Zayn win the match. Matt, it just seems to me they're shoehorning the Miz into this title hunt, right? I'm sure the idea was, oh, they're going to have Miz and... Neville and Owens and Zayn in an IC title match. I'm like, no, you just have Owens and Zayn. That's all you really need. If you yeah. you've got enough weeks to make people care about Sami Zayn, make get them involved in with that. But that's it. Oh, like, it's like, oh, you definitely don't want them is in that mix. Yeah, but he's going to be. It's Matt with terms of storyline. Like they're not no. just so much using no. him. No, 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 no. They are. They, they, he's. I'm pretty no. sure he's going to be in that match. So. Well, plus you've also got. Well, yeah, he probably will be now because. Obviously, we don't have... Neville's definitely out, yeah. Yeah. I think they want a four-way for that oh, title, and I think they're going to involve someone else. No, I just want no wins and Zane. Yeah. yeah. But you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. They, they're gonna, we'll they're, get it. They're going to try and shoehorn people in where they don't belong. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. League of Nations... Oh, by the way, as well, three weeks off WrestleMania, still no clear number one contender for WrestleMania for the IC title. This oh, yeah. This should have been ideally. This should have been announced straight after Fastlane. They should have had a match at Fastlane to decide the number one contender. Yeah, but there we are. Or a roadblock. Uh... Or at very least, yeah. I don't know. Uh, maybe, but still, you know, I I think it should have been announced long, long ago. Yeah. Because it gives them time to build up a legitimate rivalry between these guys. If Lucha Underground has shown me anything, having blood feuds—I mean, proper blood feuds between two characters. That is fun as all hell. It really is. Yeah. Watch Mil Moertes against Phoenix for the Lucha Underground title championship in the main event of Lucha Underground this week. That is a proper blood feud with stories God, and yes. characters that go back months and months and months. Right? 
awesome. Really riveting stuff, right? But, but we're talking about Lucha Underground. They started off the whole show with like was like that. Like start from start to finish was hey this is deep and it's been going for months. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, what what I mean difference to that is, Matt, is that they had a plan that they wanted this match to be like a yeah. big feud. And they set it up very at the very beginning of the season because they knew the history of those characters. WWE just don't seem to be able to patch into the same thing. I'm not saying that they should go into all the mystical side of what Lucha Underground are doing. I'm just saying Lucha Underground books their rivalries better. Absolutely. Yeah. And you can take all the mystical stuff out of it. What I'm saying in that match against Phoenix and Minwertes, you take any of the supernatural and all the extra stuff that come out of it, it felt like a blood feud. It felt like these two guys were going to kill each other because of the history that they have with each other. They can't yeah. stand being around each other, and it was for the championship. Why could they have not emulated something like this for the IC title? I'm not saying every rivalry needs to be a blood feud, but at least some of them could be, right? I don't know. Maybe I'm going in too much into this, but I'm like, this random IC title match. This is WrestleMania. Wrestle. Let, 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 me, let me get this in everyone's head. Wrestle fucking Mania. This is the biggest show in the year. They ideally should have had a plan of where they wanted to go six months ago, not three weeks before the show airs. You know? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But that's still. League of Nations speak to Renee Young backstage. They officially challenge New Day to a title match at WrestleMania. They say it won't be a comedy, it'll be a tragedy. Yeah. And immediately, How original. Immediately I'm thinking of um, ABBA. But, oh no, it wasn't them, was it? Yeah, it was them. I, I did the original tragedy, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and then it was Steps who did it afterwards. No, it wasn't ABBA, it was Bee Gees. Oh, it was, it was. You know what? My mum is a massive Bee Gees fan. I'm sure she would not like me hearing that. But it's fine, she doesn't listen to this podcast. Why would she? She doesn't like wrestling. So, <laughs> people are like, what, what am I going on with? <coughs> Talking of tragedies, though, Brie Bella and Alicia Fox versus. Do you like that? Do you like that? Yeah, segued nicely. Yeah. Brie Bella and Alicia Fox versus Team Bad. Lana comes down at the start of the match. Um, of the match that uh, lasts as long as you expect it probably would, which is not. Which is long. longer than it should have. Well, longer than it should have, but even then, not very and long. More right? than you wanted it to. Yeah. Lana distracts Brie and Team Bad to... Uh, t- no, sorry, Brie and then Team Bad get the win, sorry. Poor choice of words. Apparently, the idea is that they're building Matt to a multi-woman tag match. Team Lana versus Team Brie. And I'm yeah. like, why the hell is that WrestleMania worthy? Again, they should have had a plan six months ago where they were going to go with these women. Not suddenly come up with, oh, we need a way to get all of them on the show, so let's make a multi-tag match and just... Make and super superficially create some random rivalry out of the arsehole of nowhere. WrestleMania, man. This is WrestleMania. Like, the biggest show of the year. And they're just coming up with random storylines plucked out of their arsehole. Just to fit people in. Yeah. Stop trying to fit people in and make a, tr- a, a, a really good trimmed card. WWE are trying to accommodate their bloated roster. And, Matt, it's hurting the show. It is going to hurt that show. I'll tell you what, after all this after all this build up, Lana would literally be like the female coming of like the greatest wrestler ever, sort of thing. I'm not I'm... Well, especially considering at one point it was rumoured that she would be written off through like con- like um she had like a bad concussion or something because she was originally meant to be an in ring talent. Yeah, yeah. And if she's not cleared, then A, what the hell is she doing there? Or she'd better be fucking amazing, because this whole build-up is boring me. Yeah. I, I honestly believe, Matt, um, that... It, I mean, anyway, you know where this match is going to go. They have four hours for WrestleMania, but with all the matches they're putting on the card, they don't have that much time on their hands. Yeah. So it's going to be one-hit kill crazy, right? That's basically what it's going to be. We've seen this multi-diva tag match before, multiple times about three years ago over and over and over again on Raw, right? Well, not even then, probably about two years ago, right? Yeah. Um, we've seen this match before. It just hasn't happened in a while because the Divas Revolution put a stopper to it for a little while. We're going to have it again at WrestleMania of all places. Yeah. Why go I'm back? Trying, I'm trying to remember. What was the women's match? Like, the actual Divas title match? There was no Divas title match last year. No, because it was Nikki and Bree versus Paige and AJ. Yeah. So... 
no, you know, yeah, there, at very least there is a Divas title match this year, so there is that. That's oh, going to be a damn good one. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I mean, well, that clearly it's going to be much better than. I look at Paige, man, and I'm like, she's going to be involved in this storyline, and I'm in a like, train wreck. Yeah, I'm like, she must be, she must be looking at Charlotte. Um, Becky and Sasha getting ready in like the, the room next that. to her for what's probably going to be a really kick-ass women's match and thinking why can't I just be in there like yeah. why, why Why am I going to be in this so match I, think I hate it like we'll probably co- we'll co- no doubt no, cover it because she talks with Renee but it's like the fact that it's like oh but let's not forget total divas mm. oh no yeah Talking of that first, before we get to that, uh, social outcasts are advertising Burger King backstage, but but I thought Subway was the key to everything, Matt. I forget Subway. Fuck Subway. It's all about hot dogs now, and Subway don't do hot dog. But WWE are confusing me now. I, I trusted you. I trusted them. I really did. I'm not sure Subway, uh, being realistic without any sort of uh, sarcasm here... I'm not sure Subway would be quite happy that them picking up Burger. Maybe they're owned by the same company. I don't know, but um, I I'm not sure they'll be completely happy with like two weeks afterwards. Suddenly they have another thing with Burger King. They're rival organizations, but I don't know. Still, at least the social outcasts were f- were more entertaining than Natalia. Barely, Jesus Christ! I know barely, but at least it was. At least we I, learned, Matt, it's the, the key to Natalia looking good was Subway. We learned nothing in this promo, so... The, but we know that Bo Dallas is a dirty hot dog thief. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, Matt, I'll take it back. We did learn something, so... That is good. And that Adam Rose would r- rather be relish than ketchup and mustard. Sure. The radical mongoose. Yeah. Yeah. Paige is speaking to Jojo backstage. Lana was it sho- Jojo? Yeah, I think it was. I it was Jojo. Lana shows up and berates her for losing her title and relevancy and says it's because she's been hanging out on Total Divas. And I'm like, well, actually, she's quite right, to be honest. That's probably part of the reason, yeah. So. It's like, oh, you can't even keep your man because ha ha ha, your boyfriend broke up with you. Ha ha ha. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, Toto Divas is holding Paige back. You've seen how irrelevant she's been since the new season began, though. I mean, let's be honest. Like, she was, like, wrestling, like, Charlotte and Becky and all these people. And suddenly, just once Toto Divas starts up, she was nowhere even close to them, right? She got... Man, she went so far away from them, she's not even in the same stratosphere, right? It's like... Yeah. You know, but... There we are. Team it's, like that, it's like that, um... It's like Star Wars bit. You were supposed to be the chosen one. We said that uh, what we said before said I think that was so before. poignant is that she's going to end up being the martyr for the new generation, which is quite harsh, but it's kind of coming true. She's the one who had to um, pay the dues and unfortunately do the total divas for the NXT guys to come up and do what she probably wanted to do herself. But yeah, still, uh, Team Bad Sharp and their buddies with Lana. Like I said, we know where this is going. No one really gives a shit. So. Renee Young speaks to Charlotte backstage in a match we're a little bit more interested in, at the very least. She says that she was holding Sasha's hair uh, on her first match because she was throwing up so much out of nerves. And that Becky was just an awkward misfit that no one really wanted to talk to. Um, Well, I'm sure once Finn Balor showed around, at the very least, she had someone to talk to, but still. Yeah. Um, Rick says that Charlotte told him that there were two girls in NXT that would be great, so she had to be better. And, of course, they say that she is. I'll tell you what, Matt. The formula for Ric Flair being her manager is starting to even out a little bit. I don't know if you noticed that they... Rick is not speaking nearly as much as Charlotte, and the references about him are starting to cut down a little bit. I yeah, and he, he generally just drills... Sort of, like, drills in the emphasis more than... Taking over the segment himself. Being annoying, yeah. 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 Um, I'm not sure it's by design, but regardless, Charlotte's speaking for herself and she's selling herself. Yeah. Which is good. That's what we want to do. I've never had a problem with Rick being her manager, but the problem is it started becoming the Ric Flair show rather than Charlotte being the star. Yeah. It started to revert a little bit back now, so hopefully, hopefully. Bo Dallas and Adam Rose versus the Usos. 
the Dudleys mm. are on commentary. Bobby, B- Bubba Ray is going in hard on the Usos, calling uh, Rikishi a fat ass right off the bat. Uh, basically, what his career essentially was. He was he, he had a yeah. big car, so... Uh, this match doesn't last long enough to be called a match, really, let's be honest. Usos win, and it kind of makes me wonder if... I just had this random thought with these quick matches, Matt. I wonder if talent gets annoyed about getting into all their gear, carefully applying the paint on their face, oh, putting yeah, yeah. their hair, putting on their, their their gear, getting ready for battle, then going out there and literally the match lasting like 30 seconds. I think it would piss them off less than it does gold dust for a backstage segment oh yeah and he has to apply the full makeup and then he does oh yeah do no half ass wrestling it all off the next day yeah but uh, uh sorry wrestling uh, wrestling off and having less of a shower to get it all off you know what i mean so but still uh mick foley speaks to ambrose backstage Durr! which was awesome he warns ambrose about facing lesnar but when he's warning him he's kind of like you do know what you're getting in for but kind of like you know what you're getting in for, but I know you like it, and I like it too, sort of thing. He's kind of got this this smile going on, like, go on, keep doing it. I'm telling you how bad it's going to be, but go on, go on, you do it, you do it. It's great. Yeah. Ambrose flips the script when Foley asks him, why are you going to do this? Um, he asks him why Foley kept going after he was thrown off that cell in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and Foley tells him that, uh, you know what, I just had to keep going. And that's what you'll have to do too. And he's got him a present, Matt. Something that will help him get close Aww. to his deep, dark CZW past. So I loved that. that they, he referenced, like, you need to show him your past. Yeah. Um, and he even says it, Matt. He says he considers it a passing of the torch, which I thought was quite nice. I mean, the closest thing that we've got to a Mick Foley at the moment is Dean Ambrose, really. Yep. Um the present, as you say, Matt, is Barbie. It's the barbed wire wrapped around a bat. So, the Mick Foley special, as I like to call it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like quite to... like the fact that Barbie actually got its own got its, got her own cheer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Um, I like I said Foley and Ambrose. It just feel like I like the fact they put in there the passing of the torch. It really does feel like Foley's giving him this opportunity, right? Um. And he's all behind him and everything, so... And it's always good to see Mick Foley. I've always got... Oh, God, Foley. yes. Love Foley. Everyone uh, loves Foley. It's always strange, Matt, that Santa and Mick Foley are never in the same place at the same time. That's very true. Very true. Triple H versus Dolph Ziggler. Very, very long match, this one, to fill up the middle of the show. Started off slow, very methodical, shall we say, but it picked up very well towards the end. Um, what I like here is that Triple H is clearly he's building up his in-ring stamina for the match at Mania. He looks in pretty decent shape anyway, I have to admit. He, yep. he looks in uh, um, let's just say I would not I would not throw away his physique if someone offered it to me. Let's just say that, right? Um towards the end of this match you got a feel of like a pay-per-view style match, close calls, right? A hard-hitting match. Don't know who's going to win it. Uh, Triple H then pins Ziggler after a pedigree. I thought it was a great match, Matt. I thought that some people maybe... Oh, I thought this match was great. Yeah, I thought maybe some people dislike that it started off slow. But it's okay with matches starting off slow as long as they build up over time, right? The, yeah. The pace of it builds. The, the the match eventually builds. I thought it was great. I thought it was a lot of fun. But probably easily the best match of the night, without any question. So what I didn't like is like, loads of people were like, uh, Triple H just squashed Ziggler. It's like... Well, if the rumours are to be believed, like, that was tri- probably Triple H's last, like, live, like, um, like TV match. Yeah. At least for a while, at least. Yeah. I mean... Well, in general, apparently his, like, his, like, competitive contract is almost over. Oh, I do, I, that, that, I think I, it's, I find it hard to believe, I know, plus... I, I, I do believe that his competitive contract is almost close to being over. I find it very, very hard to believe... That he won't renew it. Like, once he needs to. He may not be planning on wrestling for yeah, a yeah, year, yeah. but he will. But, he will do it. Yeah, but it's also the fact that it's like... Who else on the main roster could it have been, really? And it's almost... I, I thought it was quite a good... Like, even if you sort of look back onto it, it's almost like um, Like a way of just going, oh, he squashed Ziggler. It's like, I think he just granted Ziggler a 
very unique opportunity. I thought the match was done very well. The fact that it definitely looked like to me that Ziggler could have won that match if it, things just oh god the yeah. other way. I think they told that story well enough. And that being said, guys, while I'm all for this and I do think that Ziggler should have got more rub over the course of his career, according to reports, he's leaving soon. So if he's leaving soon, then it makes no sense to push him now if he yeah. is really leaving. So that's the way I look at it, but still. Um, so Reigns afterwards, his music hits to a chorus of boos, which made quite an awkward situation with Cole trying to hype up how amazing it was that he was back. Um... With I, I like to look at this, Matt. If you were to watch this beatdown between Reigns and Triple H, yeah, and you were to look at it as someone who just flicked the channel onto Raw, never watched wrestling before, and said, okay, you know what, I'll give this a try. They would look at this with the fan response, like Roman Reigns is the attacking dick, and Triple H is this valiant champion who just wrestled yeah. a hard match, who's just trying everything to try and defend himself from this cock who keeps trying to fight him, right? That's because the the fans are booing the shit out of Reigns. They're cheering Triple H when he fights back. It, they've got this completely, completely wrong here. Um, the valiant champion defending himself. You know that's how it kind of, kind of came off. Sort of looks that way. You got Reigns pushing over referees and shit, right? Um, they fight on the outside. Triple H throws a production box to stop Reigns, but ends up injuring a referee, who heroically limped out of camera. Good man. Well done. Yeah. Actually, I saw the video footage of uh, him getting his wounds cleaned up afterwards and all. Oh, just not nice. He he got proper gashed, shall we say, by that. So, um, Reigns hits Triple H with a plasma screen over the back until the Usos and Jack Swagger, for some reason, is able to talk him down. Yeah, and then out of nowhere, sort of Mark Henry just appears. I don't know how Mark Henry can appear out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but he did. He managed the uh, the impossible. Triple H was busted open, and I, I, you know what, Matt? As much as I'm, I'm like WWE do have a serious problem here because the boos made it look like Triple H was the face in this situation, right? Um, this was a cool thing here because they, it's very rare nowadays that we see any fight get taken backstage. I can't even remember mm-hmm. the last time they had a fight that drifted backstage. So, fair play. It's been a while since we've seen that, and it was quite cool seeing these guys literally throw shit at people, throw people at them, right? Um, But it's just the fact now that WWE have got themselves a problem when the fans are so against Roman Reigns. It came off that Triple H was the face in this situation. They were cheering him when he fought back. Um, I just don't know. They've got themselves in such a problem here, and I don't think it's going to solve what they have, but, but still... It would have been a really. It would have achieved its 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 desired effect if Reigns hadn't already been fucked up from now, right? And that fan opinion yeah. wasn't just so against him, and he'd gone heel for nine months of the last year. But still, Goldust. Oh God, we have to wrap this up anyway. We're going over time. Goldust is walking backstage before he sees the penguin. You know what, Matt? Do you, we don't need to speak about this, do we? Can we just skip this? It was an abomination, it but was, it happened. It was uh, an abortion of a. Um, of a segment so I'd much rather leave it as it is you know because yeah oh by the way Matt to the crowd that were chanting yes 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 during this segment they should be shot and quartered yeah I I, 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 I actually do mean not with guns of course I'm not I'm not into murder but painballs really hurtful painballs to re-educate them ones. That you do not cheer. If you don't cheer during a Sami Zayn match, you have no right to cheer while this shit is on. That's just, <laughs> that's what I say. Jericho versus Neville. Um, I thought Triple H would probably be in the main event. I thought it was kind of weird that he wasn't. I thought it was very odd that he was the, he was the middle of the match. Yeah, not middle of the match, like middle of the show. Um, I don't know about you, Matt. I'm very much enjoying heel Jericho. Heel Jericho, of course. Heel Jericho is always good. That's right. He calls Styles a hack, arrogant, and way over his head, and Jericho is the boss in the ring. And he steals Big E's line of telling Styles that he's his daddy. He's the new sexual chocolate. He didn't actually go that far, but... He's the new phenomenal. He's the new phenomenal one, right? 
Uh, I still giggle whenever just thinking of the idea of Big E wide eye telling Mark Henry that he's his daddy and he's the new sexual child. Just standing over Big E. Yeah, just brilliant. Uh, daddy. Uh, looking like he's going to sexually molest him. That's like with the yeah. wide eyes and the tongue hanging out in the hip gyrations as he does it, right? Just brilliant. Now, it's not very long in this match that the injury occurs that we were speaking about earlier on. You nearly miss it. Yeah, to be honest, you kind of like he starts limping uh, um, beginning. He looks like he's trying to work through it, but then he just can't stand. Right, he, he literally he falls to his knees and he can't move. Yeah. Um, Jericho tries to roll him up. Uh, Robin Charles Robinson is the referee. He counts the two, but because uh, Neville's shoulder was up, he ca- called it like a shoot. He said he kicked out. Jericho flipped. He audibly yeah. shouts at the top of his voice. He's hurt and pushes the referee, Charles Robinson, leading to the DQ. Now, people are probably going to ask me, who was in the right here? I don't know what you think, Matt, but I think that Jericho's going to regret going that far and shouting what he did. Yeah. At very least, he could have shouted him and said, that was a three, you idiot, which would have stayed in character, caused him the DQ, would have got the entire effect. The fact is, he shouted, he's hurt, and then proceeded then to like berate the crowd and shit like this. Like, it it broke character. And the referee Matt has always been told to call it like a shoot, right? Yeah. He's not there to intentionally try and hurt Neville. And it's pr- it's like they've got to make sure that it's not his responsibility that you kick out. Yeah. Right. Um, well, no, that's it because that's that's how it was. Hasn't the ruling always been if you don't kick out, then? Then I call it, and if you do kick out, then I call it. I work it as I see it, right? That's that's the referee's job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's how, as as how it's always been perceived to me. I think Jericho was probably like he realised immediately that more than likely Neville's out of WrestleMania. He's probably feeling so horrible for the guy that he let his feelings get the most of him here, and he yeah. flipped. I don't think he should have shouted out, "He's hurt." I think he should have just shouted, "You know, you stupid idiot!" That was three. Um, but it's the heat of the moment, right? I'm not hardly going to blame him, but I, I, as far as we've heard, like it's not as if Jericho and Robinson are now enemies of each other. Apparently, they reconciled immediately after the match, right? So, oh yeah, um, it's just a, a case of both guys trying to do the right thing and clashing a little bit on that. Um, that's the way I look at it. And if you're going to ask me if anyone is in particularly in the wrong, it's just a shitty situation. I hate bringing up, oh, who's in the wrong in the situation? It's just a bad situation. Yeah, you know. Um, uh, it, it was an awkward segment, Matt. Awkward match that unfortunately just couldn't be helped that much because of the injury. I'm not going to blame them for it. No. It's just unfortunate that it happened. Was what it was. It was. Last segment, which we have to wrap up because we've gone over time. Vince is out. He relays a lot of the comments that he used last week, or the last couple of weeks, really, and brings out The Undertaker. Vince tells him to never put his hands on him ever again. And take her disrobes. Actually, no, that's a wrong choice of words. He's, he's not Val yeah. Venus, for fuck's sake. You know, take her disro- disrobes. Hello, Vinci. <laughs> yeah. He says that their alliance is best for business, and Shane O'Mac makes his way to the ring. Shane tells Vince that he's not best for business anymore, and then he explains how he's going to beat The Undertaker by fluffing his words, first of all. He's gonna a work- lot. Yeah. He's going to wear out Taker, use his heart, and turn his body into a weapon. I thought Taker's response was pretty badass, which is, sure, but it won't be good enough. <laughs> you can do all the th- all the shit you want. It ain't going to change a thing. I thought it was pretty badass. Like, you do remember I'm the Undertaker. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> Shane wonders why Taker is playing puppet for Vince, and uh, he says, you know what? You have no excuse for being Vince's bitch. And Taker and Shane fight for a bit. Uh, Shane throws more horrible punches which he nearly he really does need to work on before Wrestlemania Vince throws his son to Taker who chokeslams him and then gets the hell out of Dodge and uh, it's, I'll tell you what Matt the, the reason why I liked this segment wasn't for Vince it was just cool to see Shane and Taker talk a little bit of smack to each other even if yeah. Shane did fluff his lines a little bit here um, but like I said Matt I hope that Shane has got more in his arsenal apart from some of the worst looking punches in wrestling at the moment like it's you could bump for sure you took that that chokeslam like a champ but um yeah mm. 
That being said, though, I'm sure the majority of the match against Taker is just going to be him taking a lot of damage and maybe him using weapons and stuff. I'm sure he doesn't need to be that great in terms of slamming and stuff. That's like it. That, so. I mean, I quite like Shane on this bit. It's like I'm doing it for my kids. I'm doing it for their kids as well. Yeah. yeah. Shane's cool. Shane's good on the mic. And like I said, I just like the idea that it was less Vince here. It was more like, you know, them talking a little bit. I'm going to beat you because I'm going to do it this way. And Taker's like, you really? Good fucking luck. I'm the Undertaker. I'm going to annihilate you. And it's like the back and forth between them was pretty cool. Um, so all in all, Matt, our overall review... There's a lot of stuff you don't want to see on this show, I will say. But there is some stuff that you will. Um, the Triple H match is the first one he's had in Raw in a, in a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Um, it built up some of the storylines. I think WWE still has a problem with that title match, though. That being said. Overall, I didn't think the show was that great, but I still think it's worth it. I think, I think it's worth a single I'd watch. watch it for the Triple H match. And maybe the ending segment, because it didn't last that long. Yeah. Um, and the Ambrose stuff, I guess, was fine. New Day. No, I don't even the New Day was that great at the start of the show. No. So, yeah, you know, while I'm saying, it's probably on one of the, it's, it's probably a very low watch it once. That's probably my review for this. It, it does border into skip it if it wasn't for the Triple H match and maybe some of the interesting parts with Shane and Taker at the end. Uh, I think overall it's a pretty poor show, if I have to admit, Matt. Yeah, I gotta, gotta agree with you. A lot of segments here that really didn't capture my attention, and the more I see our truth and gold dust, makes me want me to gouge my own eyes out. So, yeah, that's it. So, is there anything else that you would like to cover this week, Matt, for the podcast? Uh, no, no. I think we're done. I think it's at least to... I'm. I'm. I can't say I'm looking forward to Raw next week. I'm more interested in Aztec Warfare. Oh, Aztec Warfare is going to steal that show next week. Aztec Warfare is going to be amazing. It's going to be so much fun. All right, then, guys. Uh, that is it for this week. If you guys do want to leave us any comments or questions, you can do so in the comment section below or on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast. You can also drop that Twitter handle, Matt. Of at Talk Wrestle Pod. You can indeed send us any messages on there. We will get to it, even if it's a little bit late. We will get to it. And uh, you can email us directly at Let's Talk Wrestling Podcast at gmail.com. And you know what, guys? You can become one of our over uh, almost 600 subscribers if you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you want to give us even more support. Apart from that, guys, we'll see you guys next week for a lot more wrestling. My review of Lucha Underground, which involves Aztec Warfare and another Monday Night Raw. And who knows? Another huge news section. I'm sure it will come up. And all your questions... And who knows, Matt, I may even come up with another super sexy, Quiz. but difficult, uber super thing. So, <laughs> I like how you've already lost a lot of your, com- lot of your commitment with the, uh, with the name. Uh, you know what, it will change as, as I please. It's my segment, so uh, I enjoy it, and uh, I will change it as... Uh, I feel like I- I'm the king to the questions castle, shall we say. You know, Fair so enough. Nice. Alright then, guys... <laughs> Um, and obviously the big announcement Matt you're going to be reviewing the pay-per-views going forward that's pretty badass that's it. So, obviously with the exception of uh, Mania because well I don't know we'll, well, that's uh, we'll going to be basically like a group one that's going to be an odd one other, and it's going to be a live review it's going to be much different than we do it usually so. half asleep alright guys uh, thanks a lot have a great week and we'll catch you next time we'll catch you soon bye bye yeah